Hello, Nintendo Chit Chatters. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome to RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And today's tutorial video is creating an initial starting point in the game. All right, guys, so here's how you do that. Basically, this allows a player to start when they're playing your game at a certain specific place of your choosing. It could be in an overworld, it could be in a castle, in a dungeon area, in a house, in a village, anywhere you want. And this is the initial position right here. This is actually the test map that's already uh, loaded in your game. So I recommend uh, for tips and tricks to look at the test map. Um, look at all of the samples in the game, from the items to the enemies, uh, all of the pre-built villages, castles, dungeons as well, and use those, and even the events too, uh, use those samples to kind of reverse engineer when creating your own from scratch. It's a good way to kind of learn things uh, by reverse engineering by seeing how they're already made from those samples. Okay guys, so this little icon here, little face, uh, is the initial starting point when you play the game. And you can see that by going out to test play here. Let me actually, I gotta save my game first. <laughs> Alright, so we're out here. Didn't do that yet. Test play. So we're gonna save it into slot 4. Cool. Make sure you guys save your creations for sure. <laughs> Alright, from the beginning. So I have no title screen, nothing like that. So the little icon that was on the edit map screen is exactly where our character starts on the overworld map here. And here we are. We can move around. We have a little um, uh, castle down here to the right, our town, a little village up there. And these are all enterable as we did and showed you by connecting the maps in a previous tutorial video. And here's a little town, go back out. But this is all about creating the initial starting point. So let's back out of the test play here. Quit out of the test play feature. Go back into map settings. <clears throat> all right. So let's say we want to change that spot in the overworld. So there it is. What you're going to do is uh, hit the B button. And you're going to edit event by hitting A. Cool. And you're going to place event. Now let's place this a while and then we'll select what we want it to do. Uh, let's say we want us to start here. Hit the A button. All right, and go to initial position. Set party's initial position. Hit A again. Now you can also choose the direction uh, of the character and how they'll be facing. Kind of like the same thing when they're entering and connecting maps. Um, same positioning, so you can have it facing downwards, uh, looking up, looking right and left. So we're gonna have our character looking down. That works for here. And there we go. And now when we test play, we'll overwrite that, save it, test play. All right, from the beginning. Ah, and there we started right there in the upper left part of our screen. So that works out really well. But uh, say you want to be more fancy and don't want to start in the overworld. I think most players, uh, when making their games, uh, and when you play the game, don't really want to start out in the overworld per se. Let's start out in our town, maybe, right? So we could do this. Let's get out of the overworld map. And you want to go to one of these areas that we have so far. So we have a village map, we have a town map, and a castle map. Let's pick the village. All right, so here's a little village. Actually, I think the town map I should do first. The town map is bigger. Yeah. Cool. So here's a town map. We could choose any one of these spots around here to have our initial position be. Um, what well, looks pretty good? Maybe down here? That's little silhouette is where you're actually um, going to be coming in when you connect from the overworld into this town or village. Um, so we could put it there. Uh, we could put it... Start you off over here, too, in the corner. Or we could put you right here between uh, the armory and a shop of some sort. We could do that. We'll put it right there. Initial position, we'll have you facing downward. There we go. Cool, and there's a little character icon there of initial position. We'll save that, and we'll give it a test play to make sure it works properly and to see how it looks. So again, this is the area, this initial position is when the player who's playing your game, where they will start in your game. It's very important because your game is based around where the person starts, right? Cool. And there we are. 
Cool. Now these are not enterable yet. You can make those by choosing interiors for houses and buildings and things like that. And you can actually uh, have an interior of a house and uh, start your character in there. And they could actually come out then into this area of your village if you wanted to. But we started right here, which is pretty cool. All right, exit back out of that. All right, let's go back to the overworld map. I'm going to show you this too. Of course, the little uh, initial position we actually had set up here is gone because you only have one initial position in the game. So that's why it's gone from here. All right, we'll do one or two more of these. Let's do uh, the village. This is the other map. Let's have our character start. <clears throat> um, how about over here, right in front of this house? That works. Initial position. We'll have them facing to the left this time. Perfect. And we'll save that and give it a test play. Cool. Save from the beginning. And there we go. We're in our little village here now. We started right here, facing to the left. And we can head out here. There we go. And there we are. I thought that was that actually, I think, um, <clears throat> oh, I have the towns backwards. Okay. <laughs> no problem. We'll do that really quick. This is the town. So let's go back to the town map. I wasn't sure which map I had for which. So town. Got it. All right. So we can have you start the church, maybe. Or start the little house up here. That's kind of cool. Put the person right here. I'll be facing down. So you guys see, this is a pretty important part of your game. You want to make sure you have a spot chosen of where you want the player who's playing your game to start and have the game kind of built around that area. In my game that I'm making, uh, the character's actually starting in the village, which is pretty cool. So there we go. Save that. Give it a little test play here for you. So this is pretty simple. Um, it took me a little while to figure out what this did exactly when I first got the game. I am kind of a, a newbie when it comes to RPG Maker and RPG Maker Fest. And a lot of guys are answering questions or pretty similar questions. So I'll be doing a lot of these tutorial videos coming up soon on basic stuff like this. Um, but if you don't have the game yet and plan to get it, this will actually give you a little lead and jump start when you get your game and know what to do. Cool. Learning from my mistakes and my um, creations, too. So we started right there, which is cool. And we can walk around here. Now we're in our little town or village area. There's a pub down here. Yummy. All right, we'll do one more for you. We'll do the castle. We'll do that initial position yet, too. Let's go to castle. And this is actually inside, which is cool. So this could be like a house, too, if you choose a house. Um, so in our castle, we can have you start maybe in the um, king's quarters or something like that, or a bedroom. Uh, there's like a, some kind of hall area maybe by the piano that'd be cool that works <clears throat> perfect and we'll test play it for you really quickly all right and from beginning and you see we started right next to the piano and this is where you could start the game for your character too so this gives you some ideas guys on what to do for initial position what it does what it means and why it's very very important when you're making your game that you think of where the initial position should be um, for the player and the character when they're playing your game we're going to head out of the castle here dun 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 i'm not sure where i put my placement at <laughs> there we go you can actually put a marker down there in each spot where the person should exit and enter as well so they know where to go to exit out of the castle There'll be another tutorial video coming down soon, probably. <laughs> uh, all I do is put a little icon there or something like that so they know where to go. But so, that's pretty cool. Initial position is very, very important. We did it for all of these areas here, including the overworld map, too. All right, guys, this is for this tutorial video. Blast the like button for me. I appreciate all of your comments, suggestions, and tips. Hope you're enjoying creating your own games as well. Stay tuned right here for daily uploads of my Let's Create series for RPG Maker Fest. Also, more tutorial videos coming soon. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. We will see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, Nintendo Chit Chatters. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome to RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And today, guys, is a short little tips and tricks video for you on how to connect maps for your world. I've gotten a lot of comments and questions asking how to do this, so here is how. 
going to create new. We're going to make a map. So here we have a test map. It's already there, so we'll use that. And this is actually um, kind of an overworld map. Okay. So there's an overworld map. Let's um, let's make a little town here. I'll put a little town over here, and let's put a little maybe a castle here. And let's see here, maybe let's do temples. We'll put one more little um, town or something. How about a little, uh, let me see. Tiny town over here on our map. So there we go. So our overworld has a few little locations to go to. Um, there's a castle down here in the lower right, a little village here. And then up there is a little town as well. All right, so that's all in our map, just to make sure it's still there. Yep, it's there. So now we have to create these maps. So we're gonna go to new data, make a new map. And here we go. So we have a city. We can choose this, we'll hit the A button. Boom. You can make custom ones, small, medium, or large. Or it's easier to select a sample and then kind of customize it from there. So selecting a sample. Here we have base. Uh, we can choose the different categories here. <clears throat> we can go to village or city. Let's go to a city for the one in the lower left of the overworld map. All right, if we hit the Y button, we can get a preview of this area. So this is the city here. It's pretty cool, a little waterway there for you. Um, this is a good city as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm recording this early in the morning for you guys so I can uh, get these questions answered by video for you. Um, you see, it's a big one. <laughs> There's different sizes as you can see here too, so this is a large one. Let's go to, we use this one here, I guess. Yeah, we'll go click on that one. And we'll just call it city. Perfect. And you can choose background music if you want to as well. Um, this will be, uh, Let's do, let me see here, uh, in town. Yeah, that's good. All right, so that's there. Got our city now. Uh, let's do our little village as well. Click on city, sample, looking for village. All right, and I'll go with that one. Go with a small one, we'll go with this one here. Rename it. So you gotta make all of your areas first before you can connect anything, right? If you don't have two maps, you can't connect anything together. That's pretty basic knowledge, but <laughs> just to make sure you guys know. There we go. I'm not gonna worry about background music here, it's just a test. <clears throat> okay. Then we have, I even spelled the village wrong, it's okay. <laughs> then we have a castle. So we can click here and sample. Choosing samples is so easy because you can kind of customize it once you set it up. You can also start from scratch if you want to, but it takes a little bit longer to build everything out. Uh, evil castle. Um, let me see here. Uh, yeah, for the castle, uh, is there dungeons? I got you. So we have to do the okay. We have to go city here, sample. Um, still like castle. So I know what we can do. We can make it an interior. Go back to map settings. We can make it instant uh, kind of interior. So we'll do this, we'll sample, uh, go here, normal castle, there we go. 
So this is an interior now, guys. Uh, a little bit different. This means as soon as you hit that castle, you can go inside the castle. You could also make it so you go into a little village area first, and then you walk into the castle. It's just creating different kinds of maps and then connecting them all together. So there we go. Cool, so we have those. Now let's go back to test. Edit this map. All right, let's go to this village here. You're gonna hit B, go to edit event. Select either or, put, uh, put it here, hit A, easy create. And then you go not to move location, go to connect map. And this is creating location movement to go and come from fields and cities. It's a transparent event for entry and exit. So we'll click on that. And we want to move into uh, the city. So click on city. And there we go. Now we'll select where we want our character to kind of enter from. Um, up here would be kind of cool. It's like a little pier here. So we can enter from here. Place it there. Put A. Hit the A button. And change the direction of our character facing that way. Perfect. Cool. Same thing over here. For the castle, hit uh, B. Set event. Easy create. Connect map. And this would be for the castle, the interior. I just chose a very basic castle. Some rooms here. Put the entry there. Cool. All right, and for our town up here, same thing, set event. Easy create. Connect map to the village. And we want to have, this is like a rundown village here, so. And this is just for showing you guys how to connect maps. Not for my game, per se. <laughs> and there we go. Well, let's go back. I actually want to change this castle interior. Let me actually delete that, because I don't like it. <laughs> Even though just testing out for you guys, I don't like it. Um... choose a better castle for you guys so you can see it all right so make another castle here really quick uh, city interior normal castle there we go let's choose a better castle that's much more like it yeah it's more like it for sure all right let's quickly name it castle because that other little castle we have was just like a, a side area of a castle. Give you guys the best kind of showing here as far as things go. All right, so we'll go back out. Back into map settings. Uh, go back to test, okay. Let's set up the event again for the castle. I'm gonna edit the event actually. I'm gonna delete this event and make it a new event. There we go, because it's a new map. So connect map to the castle and we'll have you guys enter um, here and face that way. Confirm, cool. We are set. We can do a test play and we'll put on uh, slot four here. Awesome, right from beginning. So here we are in the overworld. All right, we, um, in our map, in the overworld, we set up the little village down here. Uh, we put a little town up here and a castle over here to the lower right. And then we went in and created all those individual maps, uh, one for the city, one for the town, one for the castle. And then we created the connecting map events, as you saw me do for each one. So if we walk over to here, now if we walk on this one here, nothing happens. So you could create a duplicate event there that goes into the same area. But here we go, and we're now on this little pier, and we're in town. Pretty cool. You can go back, that same spot, and you go back out. We can go to our town over here. Wonderful. Get over there. <laughs> All right. And here's a little broken down 
village. But we're in the village now. We'll head back out. And let's go finally to our castle. Once again, guys, I'm doing this really early in the morning, so I'm not quite awake yet. <laughs> I apologize, but I want to get this out to you guys so you have an idea of how to connect the maps. It's really the most common question right now to me is how do you connect maps? How do you go inside cities and castles? So here we go into the castle. And now we're in castles. Yes, we're in this big castle, which is cool. There's a picture on the wall there, which is pretty neat. You can explore around. And there we go. So that's how you connect maps in your overworld to cities, um, villages, towns, uh, castles, all sorts of temples as well. So there you go, guys. Hopefully that helped you out with some questions regarding how to connect your maps. Uh, go through this video, watch it over and over again until you get the idea. Again, uh, if you choose pre-made um, cities and villages and towns, it's pretty helpful and handy. It saves you lots of time. And then you can kind of go and customize things how you want later on. So enjoy. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Stay tuned for more RPG Maker Fest on this channel. Bye-bye. Hello, Nintendo Chit Chatters. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome back to more tutorial videos for RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And today, guys, I'm going to show you how to easily create dialogue. Had this question quite a bit in some of the comments and also some emails. And it's very easy to create dialogue in the game. Uh, don't overthink it. Let me show you how it works. And that this is a great way to go about it. Uh, first off, we're going to be in my little village here. Um, you can do it pretty much anywhere. We're going to create an NPC. So we're in the events here. We're going to put A. Hit the A button here. Uh, create event. Perfect. Make a little character up here for our NPC. Let's have it be um, this wizard kind of uh, girl character here. Choose her. All right. Awesome. Event content. Here we go. So we're going to make her say hello. Choose her graphic really quick. And of course you can choose expressions here too. So it's kind of good to use the different expressions um, depending on what they're saying in the game. We'll, do, we'll actually make her a little kind of angry here. All right, get my stylus out for you guys. Over here it is. Cool. So we're going to make her say uh, what do what do you want i'm gonna confirm that all right confirm now you're probably wondering how do you get your playable characters the one being used in the game to respond it's very simple you just simply go underneath here click on message again and this time just look for the same icon uh, as the playable characters being used in your game. All right. So we have, uh, we have Radith here. There he is. Cool. That's Radith. Kind of a, maybe a shocked look on his face. You could say, um, sorry. I had one quick question there we go confirm I'm sorry I had one oops had on <laughs> had one quick question There we go. Um, sorry, I had one quick question. Nice. And then we go back to our message with our character again, the, the witch here who's talking to him. Quickly. What do you want? Bit of banter back and forth here. There we go. So you see, you're just kind of choosing um, the graphic icons that match the characters who were who, who would be doing the talking. And we're gonna add another message in here. So before Radith talks, uh, we can have 
We also have um, Julia as well. Uh, let me see here. Julia look like I forget what she looked like. Um, I think this is Julia here, actually. Yeah. Why are you so rude to Radith? And there we are. So do a few lines of dialogue there for you guys. You can also add in sound effects in between the dialogue and, and things like that. So let's go quickly quick uh, click save. <laughs> Quickly, quick save. Nice. Okay. Cool. So this is our witch. And we can actually know we can actually make her. Um, let's have her move around a little bit here. Uh, have her just go randomly here. That's good. Let's test play this for you guys. So you're just kind of um, entering dialogue in for the NPC here, and then if you want your uh, playable characters kind of, to kind of respond in the conversation, you just insert the graphic or icon that matches the players in your game. All right. Let's go to test play. Yes. All right, so we are in the castle here. Let's get out of our castle. Where's my exit point? I forget. There we go. All right, and I think we have to go up here. Nope, we're in the other location. We're down at the bigger village, guys. A little test world here. There we go. All right, we still have some NPCs set up here from doing our character joining the party videos. Skip them. And our little witch should be up here roaming around. There she is. Cool. We're actually gonna get um, Julia here. Let's get Radith on our side quickly. Cool. So you want the dialogue to kind of match um, who the person's going to be using in the game and playing with too. So if you have characters responding from the party, make sure they are indeed in the party. <laughs> Otherwise, if Julia is talking and she's not in the party, it's kind of an odd thing. Same thing with Radith. All right. We have our test card who actually, who actually wasn't even in the conversation, so. <laughs> Where did she go? There she is. There you go. So, as soon as we get into her face here and touch her, she, she says something. What do you want? Of course, she has your angry face here. The A button. Rad says, um, sorry, I had one quick question. Quickly, what do you want? And then, of course, Julia comes back and says, why are you so rude to Radith? And there you go. It's a little bit of conversation back and forth. Now, if we go up to her again, the same thing will happen, right? The same conversation. So how do you prevent um, a repeat dialogue? It's pretty simple. I think you probably could use variables um, depending on what you're setting up in your game. I have yet to really learn the whole variable system, so I'm really not good or the one to go to for that, guys. But uh, let me show you what we can do with uh, some switches. All right, so we'll go to switches here, edit. All right, so go into our event content. Wonderful. All right, we're going to put a switch here. Um, switch. Cool. What number are we at here? Number six, probably. Yeah, number six. All right, confirm. All right, so we put our switch there. Let's go back out to little main area here cool right here so let's add another page there we go and this page condition will be of course oops we got to choose the switch we just used switch six cool so here's how it's set up page one here uh, you have the dialogue back and forth the last thing is the switch number six after all the dialogue happens the switch will turn on that will automatically then force the event to go to this next page so let's choose a graphic here and we'll find our little witch again she is up here she's purple awesome 
All right, so we can actually have her move after the conversation, after the beginning dialogue. Uh, we can click on the little feet there, and we'll go to uh, this events movement. All right, so here she is. Hit the A button here, and we can kind of use our D-pad here to make her go to a certain spot. Actually, she's gonna go into this house or something like that, maybe? That's as far as it goes, so there we go, we'll click on that. And you can do from chosen place, from place executed, uh, movement speed, you can change the direction as well. Um, we'll keep it on three, you can actually preview it too. So there she goes, off screen. <laughs> Perfect. All right, and now we can set up more dialogue with her again. Um, click a message. Let's find a little graphic icon here. Again, she was the witch. There she goes. She'll be kind of a happy face here. You all make me laugh. Following me. Following me around like groupies. <laughs> Just some funny banter here. All right, so we'll have uh, Radith come in and say something really quick. A little icon, we'll choose Radith here. Radith is our male kind of warrior. I do like you, mainly because you're a witch. All right, and we'll have um, Julia come in here too with a message. And again, Julia was, let's see, she was down here. So you can have conversations kind of, you know, back and forth and after certain things happen. What does that even mean? Even. Even. Mean. There we go. Perfect. And we'll add a little sound effect here after that. Let's see. Uh, choose. Let's see. I guess doubt would be good for her. Yeah, that's good. And then we can have... Again, we can have them move. Um, let me see. Move location. We can actually have them move... To the castle if we wanted to, right? We can put them over here. In this dining area. Paste up that way. Cool. Set all that stuff up. All right, guys, let's test this out. So this is just a tutorial, of just showing you how some dialogue works and doing some other little events here when the character moves uh, and then having different dialogue when you go to talk to the NPC again. All right. Test play this puppy. Save it. All right, from the beginning. And again, we are in our castle here, so we'll get out of that. Go to our little village. Here we go. Let's go find this witch. This funny little witch. There she is. Oops. <laughs> I want to actually get my characters here. Because the dialogue I created actually... Um... There we go. Test play. Yeah, the dialogue I created for this actually has the other party members with us. I didn't have them with me at the at the moment there, so <laughs> let's get them back on our side here. 
the other uh, playable characters with us. And again, keep that in mind when you're creating dialogue. Make sure, will the player playing your game have those members in your party at the time of the dialogue, okay? Because if Julia is talking and she's not in your party, it's kind of a weird thing. Sure. And Rath said thanks for nothing. <laughs> we'll get you, Rath, don't worry. Yep, you can join. Alright, here they are. Let's find the little witch. There she is again. Cool. What do you want? Um, sorry, I had one quick question. Quickly, what do you want? Why are you so rude to Radith? Oh. She moved around a little bit. You all make me laugh. Follow me around like groupies. I do like you, mainly because you're a witch. What does that even mean? We're transported into the castle immediately. You see? The witch had some magical powers, and she transported us all the way back to our castle. We can talk to our princess. We already had her set up. Um, we had a little learn spell tutorial, so she's actually giving us the spell here. And our character Tess learned a new skill, which is pretty cool. And you see she moves away as well here. So she's all the way over there. And then her dialogue says, leave me be. A little bit of a sound effect there, so cool. All right. And if you wanted the witch to say something more again, you can add a little switch in there so it cuts off that page and goes to the next page. Edit this really quick. <clears throat> All right. I'm gonna put one more switch in here for you guys today. One more switch. Go to, is it seven now? Yeah, seven. Cool. All right, seven. And then we'll kind of close off her dialogue with them. So we'll add a new page, hit the A button, add page. Find her graphic here. Little witch, purple or blue. Page conditions is seven. Switch, look for seven, match it up. All right, we'll have pass through judgment off so we can pass through the character. Um, we will keep them uh, on the map, you, if you choose no graphic, they'll disappear after you talk to them, which is kind of cool. But we'll choose her to stay in the town here at this particular moment. Um, and we'll just have her move around randomly here. Alright, and that is good. Cool. So let's test this out one more time. Again, this is mostly just about dialogue today for you guys. I've had to show you how to do a little bit of dialogue in the game. Cool. From the beginning, again, we're in our castle. We'll get out of here, go to our town. We'll get our uh, NPCs. Or should I say our party members. Get Radith. There we go. Thanks for nothing, Radith says. <laughs> get him back. All right, so let's go find the witch again, and let's watch all three things happen here. What do you want? Um, sorry, I had one quick question. Quickly, what do you want? Why are you so rude to Radith? I'm gonna talk to her again. Oh, but we can't, you see, she walked away from us. You all make me laugh, follow me around like groupies. I do like you, Millie, because you're a witch. What does that even mean? So she walked away from us as she was talking to us, and with her witch power, she sent us back into the castle here. Not an easy person to talk to. I think Radith likes her. I don't know. All right, cool. All right, guys, so let's show you the little um, events here again. So page one. All right, we have our messages here. And again, if you want, um, players characters to respond back in the dialogue um, with a few lines you can do that just add in their graphic icons that match the players who would be currently at that location and we have switches set up so it goes on to the next page go to the next page here show you that make content and again uh, messages you can add sound effects all kinds of cool things of course movement locations as well this movement location here that the curse is on is for them 
moving the party or the playable characters into a certain location. Uh, you can choose any map you have created, which is pretty cool. It's almost like, um, with her being a witch, like I said, the story could be that she is magical and she has these spells that she doesn't like to be bothered at all by people, so she sends them to weird places or back to their homes if she gets bothered too much. Pretty cool little idea, I guess, right? And of course, page three. Show you the event content. Nothing. Just ends off there, so no more further ado with her. As the switch is on there for the page. So no more no more messages from her after that. And that ends this episode, guys. Hopefully I helped you out a little bit creating some dialogue in your game. I have a lot of dialogue to create yet in my game. A lot of work to do. It is a bit tedious entering dialogue in, so I probably won't be entering dialogue in, in my own game um, and recording it. Um, I'll be doing most of my um, creating enemies and creating areas in my Let's Create series, which is continuing on. So make sure you guys watch those episodes as well and keep commenting and giving me tips and suggestions and questions. I will do what I can and I appreciate others too helping out with responses and helping answer people's questions. It really helps us out a lot. A small little community here. I really appreciate it. I am Eddie Ray for Nintendo Chitchat.com. We will see you next time. Bye bye. Hello, Nintendo Chit Chatters. I'm Eddie Ray for Nintendo Chitchat.com. Welcome back to more tutorial videos of RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And a little update, guys, for character substitution and joining your party. Uh, this is a great little tip here. And actually, my method was a bit of more of a workaround, I guess you could say. Uh, and this is a great way, a little more streamlined, I guess you could say, of doing it as well. So you can use both ways or use this way here. Uh, this way makes maybe a little bit more sense to you. And big shout outs to some of the people for helping me out with that as well. I appreciate it very much. That's why we're all here, right? Cool. So we have Radith, we have Julia here. And this is about characters joining and then substituting out from your party. Um, as you see here, go into set event, into edit event. Uh, we're using a switch here in event content. Uh, the switch was right here where this cursor was. I deleted the switch out because the switch was turning off uh, after this happens in the case of yes, it was turning this off and the page condition that was on page two and the switch was down here. We had the switch selected. Instead of the switch, um, you can select hero is present. So when you're adding uh, this character right up to your team, hit the A button here and we can select which character we want to join us here from this event. And of course we want Radith to join us. So there we go. We'll select Radith. Radith is here. And that's the page condition for page two. Perfect. We'll show you how that works. Go to test play here. All right. Perfect. From the beginning, I think we're in our castle here. Cool. All right, there we are. So when you go over here, we'll find Radith. So this here is present um, script is pretty much like a switch, more or less. It's just we're not using a switch. We're just using the little page condition for hero is present. And we selected our hero, Radith. I'm ready to join battle. What do you say? Of course, we want you to join. There we go. And bam, there you go. Hero is present and no longer shows up in front of the house here. So that's pretty cool. It's just like a switch, but uh, it's kind of more specific to the characters for your party. So great tip. Great suggestion, guys. I do appreciate that very, very much. Now, we also set it up with uh, Julia here as well. We'll edit the event here to show you this. All right, so her event content had a switch that was in there too. We deleted it out, of course. It used to be right here. You can kind of check back the older video there if you like, and you'll see it there. Again, either way works. Uh, mine was kind of a workaround way to get working for me, but uh, this is actually very helpful too. All right, so page two has a page condition. And this condition is we want Julia here. So when Julia is here, she won't st be still on the map somewhere. So we had the switch earlier. Now we have heroes present. And this will be for Julia. We'll save that. Cool. So this is a great streamlined way for the characters specifically. Hit that. Let's test it out. Get out of her castle again. I need to put a save point in the map here. I really do. All right, do this really quick. All right, let's head back over here. Cool. Sure. So he's there. 
And of course, this is substitution, this particular setting of the events. So now we have Julia on our side, right? Oh, look, it's Radith back. Let's get Radith. Okay, we want you back. And there we go. And then we have both members of our party right here, guys. So there you go. Special thanks uh, to some subscribers who gave us that tip. I do appreciate it very, very much. I'll put your screen name uh, in the description here because I don't remember it offhand. I know it's about three words. I don't want to mess it up by saying it wrong, but I do appreciate it very, very much. Make sure you guys blast the like button for me. Keep commenting with your tip, suggestion, and help as well. That's the only way we can all kind of grow in this little community here and also learn the game with each other. So make sure you guys... Blast the like button, check out our other content of RPG Maker Fest. And again, these switches also work, but this is a great, more streamlined way for using your characters, uh, substituting and also adding to your party by using the page conditions with the hero is present and easily selecting which hero you want to be present or not present. I'm Eddie Ray Ford, Nintendo Chitchat.com. See you guys next time. Hello, Nintendo Chit Chatters. I'm Eddie Ray Ford, Nintendo Chitchat.com. Welcome to more RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And today's tutorial, guys, is on collision boxes. And these are very important uh, in the game for various reasons. Uh, we actually have um, a castle here. This is an evil castle already imported into our world. So we have this map uploaded here, or I should say loaded into our game data. And if we hit the B button here, we can go to collision and this is kind of a um not really a hidden feature but a kind of a forgotten feature in the game i would say if we click on collision uh, what's cool is all of the sample data in the game from all of the the maps the interiors the houses uh, the castles all of those things including all of the items and uh, decorations already have the collision already set up for you. So that's probably why it's kind of easy to forget about that the collision option is here because it's already set up for you from the get-go. But let's look at it here. Um, so the castle has collision already done on it um, automatically when you import this evil castle. And all of the X's here are where the player cannot access. Uh, whether it's an empty space, that means the player can travel in that location. Um, so when setting up collision, uh, you can either prevent the player from going to a certain spot or allow them to go to a certain spot, depending how you have the collision set up. Now down at the bottom here, uh, we have with the left and right triggers, we have, of course, the X, which is setting up collision. If we um, highlight that for you, we can add collision here to these little kind of poster pillars. Uh, so right now, uh, the player cannot go through the bottom part of the pillar, but they can kind of go past or behind uh, this part of the pillar. So let's actually play this. Um, we're going to put a little um, starting position here as well for our map, so we can show this to you guys. All right, so we'll create an initial position for you. There we go. Face forward. Save that, and we'll play. And I'll show you what this looks like. So with these pillars, um, you can't go through the bottom part because the collision box is checked. So you can't pass by that at all, you see? Now the top part of the pillar there uh, didn't have the check box, which means you can pass behind it, you see? Pretty good, right? And that makes sense. It's an upright pillar uh, taking up that one space in reality in the three-dimensional kind of world here, the top-down view. So again, the bottom part has the collision. You can't go into it or past it. And the top part here, of course, you can pass by. Okay, let's quit out of there and change it up a little bit to show you guys what we can do with it. Let's go back to collision. Actually, well, I got to edit map first. Sorry about that. All right, so edit map. There we go and hit the B button. There's collision. Perfect. Awesome. So now if we add uh, the X there, we are uh, highlighted here on the bottom with the triggers. We have uh, the X highlighted. Hit the A button. You can add an X a collision box to that area of the pillar. We can do it for these three here. There we go. We'll overwrite that and save that and show you exactly how it works. Now, those spots we can't move through. And let's prove it. Go into test play here. It saves it. All right, here we go from the beginning. All right. So, of course, as before, we couldn't move through the bottoms. There we go. Now, let's try to move to the space behind the pillar, and you can't. It is 
solid. You can't move behind it at all. That area or through this area here because the collision is checked, okay? So those areas become unaccessible from our player character. Cool, all right. But for those pillars, um, it makes sense to have those top parts checked off. But it's really about what you wanna do for your game. You can make some pretty cool things with the collision here, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, all right, so let's do this. Going to uh, go to the little eraser icon here and remove the collision for those, cool. There's a couple of other options here for collision as well. And if we highlight the next one next to the X there, this is the uh, toggle where the character can pass through the ground object map chip. The next one here is what we want to do. Change so that character passing through the ground object is displayed in front. So that means when you use this option, when the character passes through, the character will go in front of the chip. Okay, so let's do this. When we use the A button there, see that kind of, um, not really highlights, it kind of dulls out the image a little bit, showing you that that area there, um, that chip there, the, the character will actually be able to pass uh, in front of that area still. So do it for all three, overwrite and save. And go to test play here. Cool. All right, and from the beginning. Now let's see here. So we should pass in front of this. Yep, you see? We actually pass in front of it this time with the pillar being behind us. That's pretty good. Awesome. And the pillar probably isn't the best example for this, but just giving you guys a little um, easy tutorial here showing you what it looks like, okay? But you can use it pretty much on any object uh, in the game. Let's back out of there, go back to edit mapping here. Cool, collision. Okay, so the other option besides passing in front would be passing behind. So this option says change so that the character passing behind ground object can continue moving. Okay. And that pretty much was the way it was from the start. Uh, so the pillar will appear in front, but we can pass behind and we'll continue moving through as there's no collision on those boxes. Okay. So that's the way it was pretty much stock set up so that's pretty cool so again uh, if you're making a, a map or a house or something from scratch you'll probably want to set up collision then for it but any kind of data you would import uh, into the game from the samples from the castles uh, the villages the houses uh, even the items like the pillars here chairs and tables they already have the collision automatically set up but you can go into it and adjust it through the menus here by hitting your edit map you hit the b button and go to collision okay but now collision can also be used for some really good game creation as far as puzzles go uh, secret passages and mazes too let's give you an example here uh, let's stay inside majestic inside of the castle here got a really good idea for you we'll go over to the side here this is one of my ideas in my game actually so we have this kind of corridor on the right side that goes up and around to the left here you see Let's add in um, a gate, okay? We have the gates, I think down here. It's like a little iron gate. You see there it is on the right side there. We'll use that, cool. And we're gonna block this area off right in here, okay? We'll save this. Now let's see what the collision has for us. Hit the B button and collision. And you see that gate has collision on it means you can't pass through it whatsoever okay cool and if just to test it out it's obvious that you can't pass through it, but i'll show you guys to make sure you can't pass through it <laughs> we'll start here from the beginning and we'll walk back out there to the gated area over here and there it is. There's our gates we placed there. And you see you can't go through that area. So you can actually block off a part of this dungeon or part of the castle. That's pretty cool, right? Awesome. Let's say you want to make a secret area, though. That only um, maybe people who were really into playing your game and looking for secrets would find. Well, let's do that. Let's make one of those gates um, passable. So we'll set up a collision. Go to collision here in the edit maps. Cool. Awesome. So we're going to uh, uncheck the middle one here. Hover over it and hit the A button. And now collision is taken off, meaning you can pass through that. Um, if we do this, option here and highlight that. Or do this. 
Uh, this one here again, so this changes the character, so passing through the ground to display in front. So the character would be in front of that one. If we do this one here, uh, be behind the ground object. So let's try both of those. First one will be behind the ground object. So that means the gate will actually appear over top of our character in a sense. So we'll show you what that looks like. And it's more for aesthetic purposes, I guess, for making a secret passage of how you want it to look. Whether you want the object appearing on top or the character on top. Here we go. So this gate here, you can't go through the first section or that section, but you see she's kind of clipping through the middle part there. That means you can actually go through and underneath almost, see? Cool. That's pretty cool. So we can access this area now and maybe get some rewards here with some treasure chests or special items, maybe weapons, or maybe even a boss battle if you wanted to. All right, let's show you one more option here uh, with this. We'll do the other one. We'll go, um... there we go. Cool. So in this case, it should happen opposite. Uh, we should actually appear on top, I believe, from the beginning. Cool. Here we go. Our heroes. Let me go through here. Let's go. And there we go. We kind of actually just pass over top of that chip, which is the iron gate, which is cool. So it depends how you want it to look aesthetically. Um, I kind of like this here, passing over top of the chip. But again, this is a great way to kind of create secret passages and, and things of that nature. Um, let's show you one more thing here with the collision boxes. Really let your imagination run wild here with the collision boxes. Um, I like just going into collision here and looking at um, how it's set up already and figuring out what items I could add. See, if you wanted to, you can make um, this area blocked off this kind of chest here, this dresser, and this area open. So what you could do here, let's see, um, if we go back to the map editor, go, go to those iron gates again. It's a little idea for you here. Find the iron gate. It's down here, I think. Yeah, there it is. Cool. All right, so we'll actually block this off. Cool. And we'll set up the initial position right here. And we'll have the person, the character facing to the right like that. Awesome. So now we have collision set up on that dresser or on that um, kind of table. Uh, on the left side, you can't go through, but the right side you can. So it's kind of a little secret uh, corridor here. And we'll do a quick test play for you guys. So this is just little examples for you. Really, like I said, let your imagination run wild. You can come up with really cool puzzles and mazes and secret areas for yourself. Not just in castles, but also in towns, um, uh, through walls, through houses, things like that. And of course, through items as you see here. So we're starting right in this little corridor. We're kind of locked in here. These gates you can't pass through. You can't pass through the, the, tr the, uh, the chest here or the dresser, but we can pass. Oh, there we go. You see, we actually go underneath, which looks pretty cool actually with this particular uh, dresser here. That's awesome. Secret little passage in and out. So what you wanted to do for maybe this area here, what you could do is put a treasure chest behind the gate where we started actually. Maybe a treasure chest back here, possibly. And then when the player comes into your castle here, they'll see this is gated off. They'll see there's a big um, table or a dresser in the way. But if they don't pay attention, if they're not trying to get that treasure chest, of course, they'll just think it's blocked off, right? But nope, they can access this area right through here and get the treasure box. Some cool little ideas for you with that. We'll back out of here. All right. And let's go to edit map. So we'll show you a little example of that, actually. We'll go to uh, Edit Event. We'll set our initial position down here. Go forward. There we go. Let's make a little um, treasure chest. What easy to create. Make it really easy for us. And we'll put some gold in there. We'll make it uh, 500 gold. Perfect. So that's set up. And now make sure of our collision here, guys. Edit Map. Always recheck, recheck your collision setups here. 
cool. All right, so we still have that passage, passage through there. We can also make it a passage through the vase there too. That's pretty cool. We'll keep it like that. Excellent. And now it's time for test playing this. So we'll start outside the little area in the main part of our castle. All right, oh, there's a treasure box there. Hmm. Well, the dresser you can't go through. How do you get to that? Maybe there's a portal somewhere. I don't know. Or maybe if you just figure out going to through here, you can get gold. That's pretty awesome. So let your imaginations run with this, guys. Um, Clish is not, not just for, um, you know, basic map editing, not just for letting people not go to a certain area or go to a certain area. You can really use it to create um, very cool puzzles, uh, corridors, secret passages and areas in your maps and in your dungeons and worlds. And I think it's a really cool feature, kind of often overlooked, I think, in this game. People just assume the collision is automatically set up, which it is, but you can go into and edit it too, making your game even more unique for yourself. So hope this helped you out, guys. Uh, Rewatch the tutorial a little bit. Um, keep posting your comments, your tips, your suggestions. I appreciate all of you guys helping each other out in the community as well. It's really awesome. So some of these tutorial videos may come a little bit less frequent as I'm getting busier here with work. And uh, I think we're doing a pretty good job here showing you guys most of the features here. Um, I'll be doing more tutorial videos as I see fit. So stay tuned uh, for that. Uh, they may come a little bit less frequent, of course, depending upon uh, how much time I have and also what I need to show you or what I can show you from what I know in the game. So that does it for this tutorial, guys, of Collision Boxes of uh, RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. I'm Eddie Ray. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, Nintendo Twitch Chatters. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitchat.com. Welcome to more tutorial videos of RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And today's tutorial, guys, is showing you how to make a little bit of a quest or side quest in your game. It could be a main quest or it could be a side quest for your game. Pretty simple to do. Um, there's lots of things you can add into it. I'll show you some basic ideas for it, then you can probably expand upon it if you like. But uh, we have this little letter carrier here, guy, in the blue hat with the feather. Uh, we started our position here just for the test playing of the game. Let's talk to this guy here. First, we have to uh, defeat this rat. <laughs> so we'll defeat the rat here. Take him out right away. Good job. Cool. <clears throat> So now let's talk to our carrier of this letter, our postal man. There he is. He runs around a little bit. Speedy and dangerous delivery. I am always in danger trying to deliver letters and packages in the area. You know James. And of course, when you start my game, you'll int be introduced to James. You'll know who he is by now. If you select no, in this case, my quest will no longer be available. But what? Yes, we grew up in Nandoy together. James looks much older than you. We are separated by a few years. Stress of losing family at home got to him. How have you stayed alive in an area like this? Since I'm a courier, I'm constantly on the move. I gotta go now. Take this and give to James for me. So make sure you guys follow our event log up here as well. So we were given a note to deliver to James in Minbar. And Minbar is the uh, uh, beginning part of the game. It's the first village you encounter in our game. So we'll go all the way back over to here. So again, when my game is being played, of course, you would actually go uh, and start in Minbar Village, which is right here. But we're showing kind of a little bit backwards at this point. So we have a small cutscene that plays here when you start the game. And again, we're kind of going back into uh, Minbar Village right now. All right, giving you a taste of a little uh, cutscene I made for the video too, which is pretty cool. We'll fast forward through all of the text here as well. All right, so the idea now is to talk to James uh, and deliver that letter that we have, because if we go to our items here, we can see we have that courier note that we were given by uh, the postal worker, the courier. So here we go. James reads the note you delivered from the courier. Awesome. Let's see what he says. Oh my, thank you. I didn't think he had survived. You did a good deed, you two. Now then. Oh, we did it because we knew he's a good friend. Yes. Now, my friend also has some intelligence he's gathered about Nandoy. There's a family locked inside their home. Not much time left. See Mrs. Matilda about supplies to deliver immediately. Cheer up, James. We're on the mission. Thanks, David and Amelia. Now go. 
All right, cool. Change screen, subtitle. We were also gifted 100 gold for delivering the letter to him, which is cool. Awesome. That works out really well. All right. Welcome to Minbar. So Mrs. Matilda's up here. I overheard your conversation and prepared an emergency supply kit. Be careful, here's some gold. Oh, thanks Mrs. Matilda, you didn't have to. Supply kit ready to deliver to Nandoy. Nice. Cool, so we were given some gold by um, James and also Mrs. Matilda here. So we have 340 gold right now for this particular quest. Um, so let's head back out. There we go. All right. So Nandoy Village now is pretty much where James was, his little town area. Or I'm sorry, where our courier was. Up here. This is Nandoy over here. This town is broken down. Kind of under attack. It's uh, really going to be taken over uh, by some bad creatures. As you can see, it's pretty broken down right now, actually. I have a lot of things to actually create in this particular village and tweak. This is just an, a sample imported. Um, but we're looking for a house here. I don't know. Is that a house there? It's a family locked inside of a house. Hmm, what house could it be? There's a house over here. Let's see. Could this be the correct house? I sure hope so. These supplies are getting heavier by the second. The door is jammed. It's all damaged. See if the window's open. I'll grab the supplies from you. Here they go. It's damaged too, but I can squeeze in. Let me clear the glass away. Careful. Yes, mother. <laughs> Silly bro. Whoa. Cool. So as you see right now, we have that gold that we were given. Um, and the items here. Uh, at one time we had the courier note. That is no longer there because we gave that to James and Minbar. And now Mrs. Matilda gave us this emergency kit right here as well. Cool. Whoa, young boy, you startled me. I thought you were one of them creatures breaking in. Sorry, we have supplies direct from Minbar. James is very worried about. Calm down, Davy. Here are supplies for your family, food, medicine, and some weapons to help defend. You're very gracious to wander in this now dangerous town. I've been fighting off these creatures, but it's getting worse. Numbers are rising and they're stronger. Our house is severely damaged because of it. And yada, yada, yada. So you guys, you, you can see how this quest kind of took on a little story of its own too, kind of progressing the story in my game. I want to show you just a little bit of it and then give you a taste of how I have it set up as well. Uh, so let's go back out to the main part of the map. All right, so setting up side quests or quest, I was asked this question on YouTube, so I thought I'd give you a little bit of a video of this, guys. We've got to head over to our majestic overworld right now. That's where everything begins. That's kind of where you're kind of given the first quest, I would say, or the side quest here. So we have an NPC here, and that's how we have the quest starting with an NPC right here. We'll open this up. All right, so we have our graphic. We have him moving, and we have him starting when the character touches. Event content is this. Okay, so he moves back and forth a little bit. Um, he has some dialogue, uh, speedy and dangerous delivery little sound effect as well so you can kind of tweak this however you want you can add in all kinds of effects and uh, dialogue whatever you want to do to progress your story in your game then we have a little yes or no here which we selected as well uh, that's for uh, letting the players decide for themselves uh, did you do you know who James is if no you don't get the quest if you do if you recall James from Minbar village which you should and then you hit yes so under yes conditions, we have all of the messages here in the dialogue again. 
And of course, now you're given uh, this courier note. And what I did was I went into my database. And I'll show you that. And we created a custom item for ourselves in the database. Now, you could be given anything, really, uh, an item to heal, like a charm fruit or something like that, or some kind of potion, stamina potion. Uh, you could be given a weapon to deliver to somebody, uh, gold to deliver. Uh, in this case, it's just a courier note because he is a postman, he's a courier. So we have our items over here. Cool. So I picked an empty slot right there, and I hit normal. And we made our custom thing here. We chose a graphic, uh, and then we kind of created a little name for it and everything as well. And I'll show you what it is here. We actually have the courier note right up here. There it is. Cool, like a letter, which is perfect. It says, high priority note marked to James, Minbar Village. Uh, you can't buy, you can't sell, you can't consume. So once we create that in our database, now we can use it uh, within our event back on Majestic World there for NPC. So make sure if you're making something kind of custom to give in your quest, um, whether it's a note or a weapon, make sure you import it into the database first before you start doing anything else. All right, so back to Majestic World. And again, if you watch how we played through the quest a little bit there, you can watch the event log and see what happens too for some more tips. Also following along what happens in this particular uh, quest. Cool. So here he is. Edit. All right. So again, the event content, we have the yes or no questions set up. You don't have to use yes or no. You can just have the NPC pretty much go right into its dialogue and then give you the item. Again, the action that kind of starts the quest is this. You are given something and then the dialogue continues on that you have to deliver it to somewhere. So think of in your game, if you're given something, what do you want the player playing the game to do with that item? Take it to a castle, into a dungeon, uh, take it to another NPC somewhere and deliver it. In this case, that's what we're doing in my game. A letter being delivered from one place to a village, then inside to another person in that village. We have change screen here, uh, subtitles. I use a subtitle here to let the player know um, something important happened. Uh, so in this case, subtitle is David was given a note to deliver to James and Minbar. Cool. And again, the item you choose here, guys, when you choose that, uh, don't choose decrease. You're keeping it selected on increase, and of course, one. So in the item inventory, then, you'll have one of whatever you're giving. In this case, it's the courier note. Confirm. Cool. So in the case of no, it just says, sorry to bother you, and they can't do the quest again. Okay, cool. That's in my scenario. Then we have a switch here on uh, the end there. Cool. Now, page two, here it is. Uh, the switch is on, and he runs away. So that way it turns the whole event off then. So no event content here. So again, you select no for my quest here. Uh, you have no chance of doing the quest at all. It's not a very crucial part of my game. It's kind of like an added bonus, uh, giving you some extra gold. And it's kind of filling out a little bit more gameplay in my game. Also telling a little bit more of the story too. But it's not a crucial part in my game. You don't have to do this at all. Again, it's a side quest. Okay, cool. So we have the event here. We have the dialogue. You have to go back to Minbar Village. We have the item. Now you have to go to wherever you want to go in your game and uh, set up the rest of the event. Okay, so we're going to go to Minbar Village. Perfect. And we'll get our NPC, James, which is right here. Perfect. Edit. Now, James already has some dialogue in the beginning of the game, uh, so nothing of the side quest will come up until it is triggered, and it won't be triggered until page three. And that's where the side quest takes part here with James. You see page one and two here are just the beginning stages of my game. So he's talking to you, introducing you to Matilda in our town as well. But again, page three is very important. So your NPC here, to continue the side quest is page conditions right down here. You go to holding item, and of course, then you select your item. So if you're giving a, a weapon on the side quest, select the item, the weapon. Uh, if you're using a charm fruit, select the charm fruit. If you're doing a letter like I am, you go down and look for the letter, of course, in the item menu here. There we go, carrier note. Click on that, and perfect. 
So page three will start triggering uh, when we have this condition met, the courier note, which we do in the game. Here's a cool part, event content, and here's everything again. Again, you can customize dialogue, sound effects, uh, screen controls, things like that. Uh, even battles if you wanted to, uh, in mid of the uh, in the middle of the side quest if you wanted to. Actually, uh, we have the change screen from uh, black subtitle here. So the beginning is this. I think it's very important to let the player know that they're actually um, continuing the side quest by talking to this person. So the subtitle in my case here is James reads the note you delivered from the courier. So that's a good way of notifying the player that something was kind of continuing on from the side quest. Um, then we have the messages here from James. Oh my, thank you. And some banter back and forth with the playable characters. And then I have a subtitle here. You were gifted uh, 100 gold, which is pretty cool. We have a little sound effect for that. And then of course here as well, we have, uh, this is very important too. We take the courier note then away from the inventory. That way it's no longer there, which makes sense. You were given the courier note, now you're delivering it. So if you deliver it, you should literally be giving it to them. So you shouldn't have it in your inventory anymore. So that's why we have this set up here, uh, changing one. And of course this time decreasing. So it takes it out of your item inventory. Hit confirm. Cool. Some sound effects there, and then a switch as well. Awesome. So now, uh, in this event content, by the way, he does say to talk to, uh, I believe, Matilda as well, right? So then we have Matilda being involved in the quest too. And she gives you another item then to take over into uh, Nandoy Village into that house as well. So it's kind of a, a little side quest that continues on for a little while uh, from one party to the next. And over here is Matilda. And she's set up over here as well. Uh, event content. There we go. So this is set up with the switch, by the way. Uh, page Engine Switch 23 is on. So her first two pages here are for earlier dialogue in the game. And page 3 is not triggered until that page condition in Switch 23. So let's go back and look at James again. His switch was Switch 23, right guys? We'll double check that. Page 3. Event content. All the way down to the bottom here. There it is. Switch 23. So switch 23 is on James, and that will trigger when you go to talk to Matilda up here. And by this time, you should already know who she is in my game. After you talk to him, that switch will activate page three for her dialogue. And then we have her again, like I said, giving you some gold um, and the emergency kit then as well. And again, here we are choosing an item. Uh, in this case, I chose the graphic of the uh, little present. Um, that was kind of the best graphic for this in the stock graphics and the assets uh, for an emergency kit. It looks like a, more like a birthday present, but it could be a, a, a well-wrapped and cared for uh, supply gift, I guess. So increases one, we're given that. And then more dialogue here. And then we continue on into Nandoy. So you could actually just end it uh, after delivering the note to James and getting gold. But this is kind of continuing on in my game. So hopefully just by watching this here, uh, I gave you a little bit of an idea of how to do this to um, side quest in your game. So let me know guys, uh, what kind of side quests are you making in your game? Are you making uh, a larger quest or little side quests like this? Uh, these are really good ways to develop the story and prolong gameplay as well and change things up a little bit, making it more story oriented and, um, and just side quests are kind of fun to do, right? So again, always have your database with items set up ahead of time. So think of what you want to use um, for the side quest. You want to deliver a weapon or you know, give supplies to somebody or give uh, food to somebody or gold or uh, in my case, a letter. Figure that out first, create the item in the database and then go through uh, setting up all of the events that we did there today with the dialogue, the effects, and I'll call, of course making, um, giving the items and also taking away the items depending on who you're talking to in that quest. So hopefully I helped you out. Again, check out our gameplay of testing the quest in the beginning part of the episode here, and then go through and look at the event log above my head there in the double screens. And you'll see all the events happening one by one 
and you can kind of watch the video a couple times to get a better idea as well. But use this basic idea to expand upon your game, and hopefully it works out for you really well. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Stay tuned for more videos, guys, soon. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Hello Nintendo Chit Chatters, I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome to our tutorial videos of RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And today, guys, our tutorial consists of how to do battles. We actually had quite a few of the same question come up, so here's a tutorial for this. I'm creating basic battles and also battle branches. We'll be showing you both options as well, with some other little cool tweaks in them too. Uh, also, make sure to check out our Enemy Encounter Chips tutorial video, showing you how to to create enemy encounters in any map, whether it's an overworld, castle, dungeon, village, house, whatever, uh, and creating those random encounters. Very important to learn that, so check out that video as well. But let's dive into these battles right now. We're using our test world here. We have our little initial position set up right here. Then we have two enemies already. Now, if you don't have enemies in your game, you have to have them before you can do anything else. So I recommend going to the database section. And it's easy to just import sample data here and tweak it as you need to. Or you can also create from scratch if you like. So you just go to an empty slot basically. Go to sample and you can choose. There are small enemies, there are medium sized enemies, and there are large enemies too. Okay, so you just select whatever one you want. Let's go get a, a snake here. There we go. So I have a snake, slime, bat, vampire, and dragon already set up in my database. Cool. Again, you can also create from scratch and then you can also do groups you can create different groups i have a few here uh, the first group is two small enemies and one medium and you see the formation there the two little yellow squares on the outside with the larger enemy in the middle we have this group of uh, six small enemies i think there are three bats and three slimes in that formation yep there we go you can also change the formation here. You can make the number random as well, and you can choose what enemies go in this formation. All right, for the larger enemies here, you only have one large enemy at a time. You can have two smalls with it if you want. There are lots of possibilities for that. The formations, as you see, we have the smalls and the yellow, the blues with the yellow, and here's some uh, reds and yellows and also blues and reds together so you can create good combinations of enemies here depending on what you have imported so make some groups up for yourself as well I have three groups right now and about six or seven enemies just imported as single monsters so you can use groups or single units in your battles all right go back to the map settings to test all right and here's our two events guys uh, we can play through this in a little bit let me show you the, how the events are set up so we go to edit, you go to create event, of course. You would hit the A button here and create event. In this case, we have our event, so we'll click on that and edit. Cool. So the first thing you wanna do is choose the sprite, choose the graphic uh, for your enemy. In this case, it is the bat. So we have our bat right here. You can choose the color you already have set up. I think it's actually black, so we'll choose that black. Cool. And here is the most important thing, the event content. What's cool is in battles, you can do all kinds of things from cutscenes to dialogue. We have some dialogue added. Uh, we have the enemy saying no trespassing. Uh, we have the hero saying, uh oh, I'm ready for battle. We have some screen functions, some effects. We have a flash. We have uh, changing the screen to red, some subtitles, sound effects, and of course the all-important battle. And you'll find the battle, let me just uh, actually, we'll do this, edit, go down to an em empty uh, event page here. There we go, the line item is empty. Uh, if you want to find battle, it is right here in screen functions. You click on that and you click on battle, okay? And again, you find your subtitles and everything else with the messages, sound effects, background music here, all of your movement items is in move control, branch, actions, uh, conditions, screen controls, and of course status controls as well, timers, things like that, okay? So you can set this however you want. Um, if you don't want any dialogue or a special effects or anything else added to the event here, you can just go into and do the battle, okay? 
And the last part we have is a switch. So that way when the battle ends, uh, the enemy will be removed from the map. Now, if you do copy this event around your map or to other maps, uh, be sure to change the switch for each enemy. Otherwise, when the person defeats the one enemy, they will all be removed from your map at the same time. Because if they're all on the same switch, that wouldn't be good. So it could kind of be a game breaker or breaking the balance of your game. So make sure you change switches if you copy this particular event to your page multiple times, okay? So that's the first page there. Uh, we added a second page to this event as well, right here, and we didn't choose a graphic for it. Uh, we deselected Pass Judgment, there's no event content, we selected to Run Away, and then Page Conditions is our switch. So this page will pop up once the conditions are met on page 1, there'll be no graphic, uh, you can pass through, the item or the sprite will no longer be on the map. I should say the enemy will no longer be on the map. Cool. Let's test play this bat. I do have it set up that we have a pretty good weapon already equipped with our hero. I think I started him as a level 10 just for test purposes here. I don't know why. <laughs> just for fun. So here we go. And this is uh, pretty much character touches. The bat was approaching. No trespassing. Uh-oh. This is all the event log. You can watch it up here. And the executions. Change to red. Subtitle. Here we go. And then the battle takes place. Cool, the bat appeared. All right, we're gonna fight him. Let's attack. And he's dead. We had a big mithril axe, I believe, and level 10, so. There we go. We won! Cool. Awesome, and he's away from the map, he's gone. Cool. So again, if you copy uh, this event, I'll show you here. If you copy this and place one here, uh, if you battle the bat, both of those bats will disappear. So what you would have to do, show you this, go back out, and there we go, edit, we're gonna make a new switch. So you go to the event content, we're already using two switches, the switches for the other enemy we have, so we would go to a different switch here, switch three, there we go. And then of course on the second page of this other bat here, Change of page conditions to switch three. There we go. So it does make it nice and easy to copy and paste events across your map or across other maps too, pretty easily. But just make sure you're tweaking the conditions and things like that to match. Otherwise, again, you could just battle the, the bat one time. And if you have 10 of these bats across your maps, they're all gonna, gonna disappear after the one battle. So that would not be good at all. <laughs> Let's go through it one more time. Test play really quick. All right, from the beginning. All right, we'll battle this bat here. Uh-oh, I'm ready for battle. Now this one is on Switch 3. So once we defeat it, uh, the other bat with Switch 1 should still be there. Attack. Boom, he's attacked, he's dead. <laughs> cool. Make sure you guys do blast the like button for us as well. We love your tips, hints, suggestions, techniques, and help as well for all of the questions being asked about this game. We're trying our best to help you guys out too. So make sure you give, give us a like. That'd be really appreciated. There we go. And he's gone. But this bat still exists. Perfect. Now, uh, those bats, I believe, are on approach. Double check that. Yep. So you can have the enemy approach the hero. Um, you have it back and forth vertically, horizontally, random, or don't move. Sit, sitting idle in a certain spot, too. Okay? So you can change all of that however you want. Cool. Now let's go to our slime over here and this is a bit different this is set up with a battle branch and the battle branch just gives you a few more options for the conditions during battle i'll show you everything's set up pretty much the same you can have all of your effects dialogue if you wanted to uh in order and then the next thing you want to have of course first is then your battle so we have our battle uh, i don't have any dialogue or effects here we have just the battle so again, you find the battle, show you here, in screen functions, battle. Okay, that's what you want. Cool. So that initi initiates the battle. Okay. And of course we have a slime here. Uh, we can change it to a dragon if we wanted to. We could do groups. We'll do a group here. We'll do uh, the dragon, uh, the bat, and the slime. That's cool. 
You can change the background here. You can designate it to a certain uh, terrain if you wanted to. Or you can just do it from the terrain that's already on. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, you can choose music as well. All these little options you have for battling. It's pretty awesome. Okay. Now let's back out. Since we changed uh, the icon, we're going to change the graphic here too. Uh, the main enemy here is our dragon. So we'll put him as a sprite. Okay, there we go. Back into event content, guys. Here is Battle Branch. Now, where do you find Battle Branch? I'll show you. It's in the branch control, right down here, Battle Branch. And this is creating a branch based on battle outcome. Uh, branches up to six levels can be created, which is pretty awesome. Lots of possibilities here. So here's the conditions that I chose if one, I have a little kind of subtitle going up if the battle's won. I have a little effect going up, makes the screen black, subtitle, enemy dropped, detox herb. So in this case, if you win the battle, uh, you can actually have the enemy drop uh, an item. In this case, it's a detox herb, which is pretty cool. We have after the subtitle, the screen changing back to the original color, and then dropping the herb. This is all in the items. You find all of these here. Increase, decrease item. So in your database, you can import items or create items or samples, even weapons too, or gold, things like that. And of course you can select what you have imported. Right now, we just have the one imported here, Detox Herb, we have that selected, and there we go. You can change a number, uh, increase or decrease, take things away or give things. Cool. You can actually take things away during battle um, if they lose. And you would do that, of course, right down here, if lost, right? Now, if lost, I have the hero moving back and away from the battle. But of course, if you lose, the game does end as well. So, go figure. But you can do all kinds of subtitles here, or cutscenes if you wanted to, add more dialogue, like, ha ha ha, you lost, never come back here. For whatever your imagination has, right? Cool. And the branch end is our switch. We're using switch 2 here. So if you win the battle, uh, this page condition will be removed from everything. All right, so let's try this here. Uh, we're all gonna lose though. It is a dragon here. <laughs> let's test play this puppy. We have a mithril sword or a mithril axe, I think, equipped, so it's pretty strong, uh, but we'll probably won't be able to defeat him today. So here's the battle. All right, we actually have a group too. We have the dragon, the bat, and the slime. So let's attack the dragon. He attacked first. 110 damage, so yeah, we're done. And you can see we lose. Now watch our hero backtrack with our movement we actually made. There's a little sprite there, and then he's disappeared. He's gone. So we actually moved. You see the event log here. Kind of funny. We had that little effect in there, and the game over, of course. All right. Let's try it here with an easier enemy, guys, for you. So we'll go back in here. Edit. Let's just change a graphic out here. We'll put a little slime in here for you guys. There's a slime. Perfect. Event content. All right, go to battle here. Uh, we'll change just to units. And we'll click our little slimy guy there. And change the music to regular battle, I guess. Um, this field is fine. Save that. So our slime will still drop this detox herb. And I'll show you what that looks like, too, when we win here. Go to test play. So lots of options from uh, battling here, from placing uh, enemy encounter chips to doing specific battles like this, having enemies actually on screen, these little sprites, and going into battle. It's pretty cool. Right. Slimes appear. Just fight him. Mithril Axe, bam! 38 damage. He's done. Cool. Awesome. You won. Ooh, enemy drop detox herb, cool. I actually have that scrolling. I do prefer just the middle fade in, so I could change that, but you get the idea. So you can have like end credits there if you wanted to or whatever. And of course, if you go to your items, guys, you will see we have the detox herb, which is awesome. I like adding little messages in like that. Uh, you can add sound effects too. Um, 
for the item being equipped or gained or received or dropped or whatever. Really, you have to use your imagination. I do prefer adding some kind of message there, though, to let the player know they actually received something. If you don't, uh, they will really have no idea they got anything dropped from that specific, specific battle because um, they won't know until they look into their items and see something kind of that, at random already in their item box. Like, what is this thing? You know, how do they get it? So I kind of let the player know with a subtitle that they did receive this detox herb from this battle. Okay? Then go to event content really quick. Again, the subtitle here. I do prefer the middle fade in there, but it's really up to you guys and your options. So there we go, guys. Um, again, this is the battle. Very, very important. A battle branch control, too. And then I got all of the effects here. Your switch is being used. And of course, uh, importing uh, your, monster, your monsters into databases then making them into formations with groups and things like that. Really giving you flexibility here in creating uh, multiple different kinds of encounters being very flexible. This game really has a limited or unlimited possibilities. It's all about your imagination. So make sure you guys blast the like button for me. Comment below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helped you out too. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Stay tuned for more videos, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, Nintendo Chit Chatters. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome back to more tutorial videos for RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS Maker for providing a copy of the game. And today I'm reading a question from our YouTube comments. This is from uh, Dan Day Games. They ask, hey, I have some questions. How can I do an automatic event and only once? I don't understand the switches in the 3DS. How can I put them? And also, uh, question two was, how can I put hearts, for example, on my hero's head like an icon? And I'll be covering that today for you in this little video. So I'm actually using um, my game world here, and I have the event already set up. So let's go into it, and I'll show you the process here. So we have a little NPC character here, this kind of uh, old-timey kind of warrior guy. And I have the initial position set up for us right here, too, so we start the game here. Um, so automatic events pretty much means... Uh, what it says. Uh, the event will happen automatically no matter what scenario um, you have set. Automatic events happens automatically. Uh, so we'll open this up, go to edit, and in this scenario um, this NPC is giving us 100 gold as a gift. Um, so I have two pages here. I have his graphic chosen. That's pretty basic. And then the event content is this. Let's look at it. So I have some little effects in here as well. Uh, I have first the emotion expression. Uh, if I click on this, this is kind of the emotion of this particular character. It could also be uh, either on the event itself, so on this NPC, or on the hero. If you click on the hero box here, that means the emotion expression will actually happen on the hero uh, on the map. If you click on this, this will happen on the NPC or whatever item or object you have for the event. Uh, of course, you can choose the graphics, too, as well. Um, a few options here. You can also have it loop over and over again if you want, or no loop. There's some more here for no looping. So you can have the character some kind of fun or charmed with a heart. You see there, angry, appalled. Okay? So we have it here for a surprise because this NPC is going to be giving us gold as a little gift. So we have uh, this surprise icon happening over the event. Um, you can actually ha have it happen over our hero too as a surprise look like, hey, why are you giving me the gold, right? All right, so we'll keep on the event though for now. All right, so then we have a message set up. Very basic message. Hello, enjoy this golden gift. Then we have his character icon chosen. Confirm that. And then, of course, this little icon as well. Uh, again, we have it over this event. You can also choose to have the icon over the hero. So this will show a little graphic above uh, the NPC or above your hero. You can choose from a bunch of different ones from your items and things like that. We have a little present wrapped like this for a little gift in the game. We'll hit confirm. <clears throat> Now, all of these options here for this motion expression and on head here can be found We'll go back here. I'll show you. Let's just go to add new really quick. We'll hit A here in the add new event. These emotion expressions can be found right below the feet here, the movement controls. And this is condition control. 
So you have a change display status, uh, easy action, emotion expression, and show icon overhead. So I'm using the two bottom ones there. I'm using the emotion expression and then showing icons over the head of either the character or the event. So if I hit A here, I can then choose one of those conditions. Say I want to show more expressions, hit A again. And then this is where you can kind of choose your graphics and who you want the expressions to happen on, either the hero, uh, this event, or even another event too. And again, you have all of these here that loop from worried, panicked, angry, laughing. Here we have no, surprise, doubtful, and such. Okay, so that's that. You also have showing icons over the head. And these aren't really expressions per se. These are icons, maybe like a present, a key, um, maybe a chat bubble or something like that, possibly. I'm going to show these are for most of the items I already have imported in my game. So you can show these. If somebody has a note to possibly give, uh, you can have like a little letter like that, um, a key over uh, the NPC or over the event's head, um, maybe some charm fruits or some healing herbs. A spell or something too. It depends what graphics you have or items you have imported into your database. They'll show up here then for these graphics. Okay. You can also choose graphics as well from here by pushing Y. And you have all of these that are already in assets of the game. So you have a little bottle, a map perhaps, um, some gold, some rocks, uh, fish, shovels, weapons, things like that. Then we have, uh, using the C-Stick or the control pad slider, I'm sorry, you can actually switch between the weapons and some wardrobes, things like the other items too. Okay? So lots of choices here for this, as far as the graphics you chose. So those are the two options. Um, in condition control, those are where you want to find your expressions and showing the icons over the head. Now you also have to make sure you turn the icons off, otherwise they stay on either your hero or the event the entire time. And I'll show you how I have that set up in the event here. All right, so here we have on head. This is our emotion expression. We have the present event. So I have a little gift showing above uh, the NPC character's head. And then I added a sound effect here. And that's for the coin. He's giving us gold, so let's add the coin sound effect. It's pretty good. Um, let me show you where you find that sound effect, of course. Over here where the little speaker is, uh, BGM is background music, and of course, SFX is sound effects. So you choose that there, okay? And then we have this action happening where you actually are given 100 gold. Uh, you can also make it so you are, um, uh, so gold is removed from your belongings too. Uh, I'll show you that really quick. Oh, go back into the event here. I'm sorry. There we go. All right, go to add a new event. And all of this happens in the status control. If we hit A here, the top menu selection is increase or decrease gold. Uh, increase or decrease items, uh, weapons, armor, HP, status. You can heal all, level up, learn skills, which we actually use this option here in our character learning a spell. And substitute members down there as well. All of these are very, very important for making your RPG game. All right, so we use this one here, increase, decrease gold with A. And then you can change this, since this is a gift of gold, you can change it to any amount you want. We're using 100, uh, you could do it 500 or whatever. Um, you could just do 10, 10 gold, something like that. Whatever you choose, it's really up to you for your game. Okay, and then again, we're giving them gold, so you want to have the amount increased to uh, the playable character. Uh, if you want to remove gold for maybe somebody stealing money from you or something like that, or they're buying something, you would choose the decrease option here then, of course. Okay, so I'm going through all of the events here, or all of the options in my event here for you. Alright, so there's the gold, and then I added a subtitle. Um, this is in the same area you'll find uh, to write the dialogue messages in. I chose subtitle so it shows over the screen. This is good to use when something important happens. That way the player playing your game can see, oh, okay, over the screen it says 100 gold obtained. And that's why I typed into the text there. We can preview that for you. There you go, 100 gold obtained. And that will actually show up over wherever you're playing the game at for this event. You can choose the speed. You can have to scroll if you want to as well, like credits with scroll. In this case, just middle fading is fine over there. All right. 
So we have this whole thing set up. Now I have here another expression. After you give or you give them the gold, after the sound effect goes off, after the subtitle goes off, I don't want that present on the NPC character's head anymore. So I have this expression. Uh, I just have it turned off, basically. So I have, again, the present was above the event's head, so I have this event chosen, and I have the graphic don't show. So after all of the steps are taken in order that they're made in the event, um, it will no longer show that graphic icon. If you don't do that, it will continue showing over his head as a present, and then it may confuse the player thinking, what else does he have to give me, and nothing else happens. So I have that icon being removed from the NPC. And then we have a switch here, okay? We'll show you the switch really quick. The switches are over here underneath the speaker. This is in branch control. Uh, we hit this and switch on or off. Now I'm using a bunch of switches here, so we'll have, um, you can name them if you want to. I just go with them with their numbered order already. Um, I'm using a bunch in my game, as you can see. <laughs> but we are on switch 24 here, so you would select switch 24 for this. That's the one that I actually have set up for my switch. Go back into everything here. So there's switch 24. And that will end this first page of the event, okay? This switch basically will be activated on the next page of the event, turning it off so it won't happen again. Hit B to exit out. All right, so we have a second page for this event. If you guys forget how to add a second page or more pages, when your cursor's over page one, hit the A button, and you can add a page. You can also copy pages, making it easier for you to copy and paste events can delete or replace or edit as well okay <clears throat> so here we go page two has our same graphic there is no event content here everything is happening on page one this is just to shut off everything from happening again and of course go down here to page conditions and we select our switch go down to 24 was the switch we used so we click on that and there we go I have a uh, pass judgment here, uh, unchecked for page two. That way uh, you can kind of walk through the NPC. Uh, he doesn't get in your way to walk around. Um, we have his movement set to random, which is good. Um, now on page one, you asked about uh, auto execute. So this is an auto execute event. Basically, when you start the game here, it automatically happens or when your character comes in contact in this area, in this vicinity, the event automatically takes place. So start. You can do this by uh, when the character touches uh, the NPC, uh, when touched by another event, uh, investigate, which means when the player pushes the A button in a specific area, uh, when an item is used, or auto execute, which says right here, uh, automatically executed. Uh, since it continues unless stopped, please use a switch and change the page to stop it. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're using a switch and a page two to stop it. So the switch happens at the end of page one and page two is added and the page condition for that switch is added to page two over here. So that turns everything off. That way it doesn't keep happening again. And I'll show you here what happens. Uh, let's just go through it here. We'll test play it for you so you can see what happens. All right, so we have our initial position here. That way it happens automatically. All right, so we're in a little village here. Start the game. And I just push beginning here and it automatically happens. Watch. Little surprise icon. There's our text. Watch the event log up here. So the expression happened, the message. Enjoy this golden gift. There's a sound effect, the subtitle, the present. See that? And now it's gone. The switch has been turned on and now it can't happen again so the event auto executed and it's no longer repeating itself when you first start out you may have the event happening over and over and over again that's when switches come into good use to turn that off all right exit out of here let's go back into the event here i will show you what happens um go to page two here and we'll take the page condition off so even though our switch is on page one, it's not being activated here at all. It's just knowing that the switch wants to be used. Uh, so we'll hit overwrite 
and watch what happens here, guys, now. Without the switch being used, the event will happen. This is on auto-execute. From the beginning. All right. The event log again. Motion expression, message, subtitle, gold sound effects. And see it happens again and again and again. And if you're giving somebody gold, um, you give them a lot of gold over and over and over again, but also this also prevents the player from moving around. Um, they can't do anything. The game is pretty much stuck or hampered here because the event keeps happening over and over and over again. See this? It's automatically executing itself again. Okay? Let's hit exit out of there. So you see how important those switches are. Let's go to page two. And page conditions. Again, choose the switch we're using, which is switch 24. There we go. Awesome. One more test play for you guys. Test play. All right, from the beginning. All right. You can watch the event execute log up here so you can see everything happening in order. There we go. Cool, and it's done. Now we can move around our map. Without that switch, we couldn't move around, and the event would keep repeating itself over and over and over again. Just like me, repeating my dialogue to you. <laughs> Hoping you guys get it. Um, you can watch this video numerous times. Um, that way you can see exactly what's happening, uh, all of the steps here for yourselves. Experiment, trial and error is key. And I really appreciate you guys too for your questions, advice, and also your tips, and also helping each other out. That is really, really awesome. I really appreciate that very much. Um, let's go back to the edit event here really quick. So that's auto-execute. Um, let's not do auto-execute. Let's just do um, when character touches. And I've been using this a lot. Um, this is pretty common for most events. Um, I have one or two auto-executes right now in my game, uh, but I also have a lot of character touches events. Cool. So this will not happen by itself. Again, auto-execute means it's happening automatically. It's just what it says. So we're in a little village here, kind of roaming around here, and we see this NPC. Well, let's talk to him. So as soon as we touch him with our character, then the event takes place. Enjoy this golden gift. There we go. Wonderful. And now it's done. It's complete. Okay? So one last time, we'll go back into the events here, guys, so you can see this. Edit. Put that back on to auto-execute. So start. Very, very important. See the event content. And again, you don't have to have all the sound effects or subtitles if you don't want to. Um, you can add more into it as well. Um, you can add fade-ins, fade-outs, things like that. Really experiment with how you want it to go. Um, but we have the expressions here, we showed you the messages, um, the icons above heads. Um, let's just test out this really quick. Uh, we're going to have uh, the emotion expression. Let's have an emotion expression here for our character as well. We're going to insert here. Let's do this. Emotion expression. Let's choose our hero this time, right? Um, we'll do surprise. Cool. So surprise. We're going to insert here. And then go back to emotion expression. Hero, don't show. Cool. Let's see if that order works out pretty well. Uh, so... You have a brief moment there where you have an expression icon or an yeah, expression show up over the uh, head of our uh, hero as well. And then it should go off pretty quickly. And you can kind of change the order of things too. It's really up to you. You can cut and paste and everything. So there we go. It's auto execute right now. So look for the uh, little expression here. There we go. You see? A little surprised expression. It's kind of cool. Adds a little bit more um, personality to your game, I guess. That's cool. One more thing we'll show you guys. Um, back into edit event here. All right. Go into this page. Let's add in...
insert here. Icon overhead. All right. So what icon could we show on the hero's head here? Let's see. Um, treasure chest. I guess we could uh, have him think of something. Let's see. Uh, da -da -da. Let's do a little chat bubble here. That's an icon for silence recover, so let's not use that one. It's kind of weird. <laughs> These are all for spells. We'll have a coin. Show above his head. There we go. Coin two. Confirm. Cool. So expression shows there. And then we'll also take it off of here. All right. Show icon overhead. Hero. And then graphic don't show. So make sure you add the don't show, otherwise it will stay on the hero or the event's head as you're playing the game. <laughs> so it's as easy as take them off. All you have to do is just choose don't show. Did I save it? All right, here we go. Auto execute. We'll have a little expression as well for our hero. There it is, and the coin, and it disappears. Cool, right? All right, guys, there you go. Special thanks to you guys once again for all the questions. I'm trying my best to give you all the stuff that I know. I'm still learning a lot to the game, guys, including variables. So <laughs> if I can't answer some of your questions, hopefully others can. Really appreciate it. And that was from Dan Day Games. Thanks for your questions. Uh, I am Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Stay tuned to our channel, guys. Much more Nintendo content, including more RPG Maker Fest material coming your way soon. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Hello Nintendo Chit Chatters, I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome to more tutorial videos of RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And today's tutorial video is showing you uh, how to gain entry uh, into uh, a door, in this case uh, through a church, and uh, get a key and use the key to get into the door and get into the church. Pretty simple, guys. We actually have everything kind of scripted out here and already designed, and uh, the events already are set to go here. But I will show you, I will test play it for you, and then we'll show you all the event logs that we have and show you how everything works, too. And it takes a little bit of time to put it all together, but once you do, what's kind of cool is you can copy and paste these things around uh, your map or other maps, too. And you can kind of tweak things to change them for your next scenario, basically. All right, so here we have our initial position. Here we have the event for the door, a little bit of dialogue and things like that, some sound effects too. Over here we have a treasure chest with a key inside, and of course, if you want, you can put the treasure chest far, far away, even if in a different uh, village if you wanted to. So let's do it. All right, test play. Cool. Make sure you guys blast the like button for me, keep commenting below with your tips, suggestions, and questions, and also make sure you help each other out too. That really helps me out when you guys help out in the comment section. So from the beginning, all right, so we're in Nandoy Village here. Uh, let's do this first thing. We're going to go to the door. Hello. The knocking sound effect is pretty cool. So sound effect and the message in the event log there. Uh, only knock once, Davy. Jeesh. One more knock happened with the sound effect. No one's answering. Okay, so no one's answering. So we're going to look around here. Oh, there's a treasure chest. Go to the treasure chest here. Ah, oh, we got a church key. Hmm. Awesome. Here goes nothing. The key is rusty. I heard it. Oh, and there we go. We are now in our church. It looks better inside than it did outside, although there's a few cracks in the wall here, spider web in this church. This is actually a sample building as well, so we can head back out. Now we have access to this church whenever we like. Cool. All right, so let's head out of here and show you the, uh, the event logs and everything like that. Cool. So we'll start off with um, this little area here. I actually put a door on the church, and you can do that when you're building the map. You can find doors and windows and things like that. So I have this door here. There's different assets of, of doors. I have this one chosen for the church. Uh, it's pretty cool. Again, this is a church building here as well. Uh, this is actually a whole village here that's preset for you so make sure you use samples in the game it really helps out save some time too but I added a door to it and then here's this first event 
We'll open it up. All right, so you can always change name if you want to. Uh, the graphic is nothing. The event content, I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, movement, of course, none. Um, start when character touches. So as soon as your characters go up the door, you'll get that sound effect and a couple messages. Let's go to the event content here for the first page. All right. So here we have the sound effects. It's knocking. You can change the pitch on that if you like. Then I have my first message, hello. Some more sound effects. So he knocks, he says hello, knocks again. And then our next character here, Amelia says, um, only knock once, Davey Jeesh. So a little bit of banter added into this event. And then he says, no one is answering. Okay. And then I have a switch here as well. This is switch 27, and I'll show you where that comes into play here. Okay, cool. Let's look at page two of this. And page two, the page conditions are, well, switch 27. So that matches the switch on page one. Page two, the page condition is switch 27. And then, of course, also, the page condition is having the church key. That will set off this page and allow you then to enter uh, the door. Without having the church key, you can't go inside. And the event content here, then, is a little bit more of uh, dialogue and banter. Uh, Davey says, uh, here goes nothing. That's his dialogue there. Okay. And the next thing is the sound effect of the equipping of the item. You can kind of change all these however you want. You don't have to have any sound effects if you don't want to, but I like having the sound effects. It adds a bit more atmosphere to the game. All right, then one more message says the key is rusty. Then sound effects is opens door. Then I have a movement location here. And again, your movement location, guys, is all found right here where those little steps are. Click on the steps. Hit A for move location. Then you can choose your map of where you want to go. Now, if you want to go inside of the church, you have to have a church interior or some kind of other interior um, to go to. So on my map, <clears throat> we'll go all the way back out here to the maps. As my voice goes, I apologize. <laughs> here we go. Select map. We have our church interior. There it is, church. So we already have this. This is a preset sample as well. Again, you can make your own from scratch or use preset samples. This is our church interior. So make sure you have uh, the church interior already created, ready to go before you actually make the movement event, okay? Also, go to your database and make sure you have a key already made up for the event as well. So if you're having somebody unlock a door, you wanna have them use a key perhaps, right? So you go to items, and I have a few keys already in my game. Uh, for this one, we use a church key, right here it is. And when you're making the item, you can click on normal and you can give it a name. You can choose a graphic as well. Different kinds of items and graphics here. Give it a description. Consumed. If it's a key, don't consume it. <laughs> Sell. Um, not really. I would, you can't do it probably. But it's up to you and how you want to create your game. So go back to the event page here. Go back into the map. All right, go back to Nandoy Village here for you guys. And if you guys don't comprehend what's going on here step by step, review the video, um, play it over and over again, just kind of maybe take notes of the event log there so you get a better handle on everything happening. But it's pretty straightforward here. Okay, so back to the events here. All right, so page two. Again, the switch 27 and the church key. All right, so your movement then location is we choose the church. That's where we want to go into because we're at the church exterior of the building. We're at the door. So we want to choose the interior of the church. We click that. And then you can set your spot where you want to enter at. I usually do it right here. There we go. You can face front. That's fine. Cool. So that is all done for uh, this particular event. Okay. Now the treasure box. Uh, making treasure boxes is pretty simple. You can do it from scratch totally, or go to Easy Create, and you can choose treasure chests right here. And you can do gold, or you can do items. If you have your key item already made up, you can choose it right here. So we'll choose item. There we go, church key. Cool. It gives you the variable already, and there you go.
You can also come into the event here then and change the icons and kind of tweak the event content as you see fit for your event. But this is just a duplicate now. So I'm showing you guys where to go to do that. Easy Create's a very good feature in the game. Again, use samples, it really does help you out. Okay, let's look at the treasure chest. Event, edit. All right, here's a graphic. Uh, this starts when the character touches, so they can actually get the key first, which is no problem. The event content. All right, so some sound effects here, opening the treasure chest. Um, the variable's already set up from the automatic uh, sample, uh, variable 23. Of course, it decreases here once you get the key. All right, and then the other page here, guys. All right, again, this is automatically set up here with the easy create sample when you're making a treasure chest uh, with an item or gold. Uh, the variable's already there. Here's some sound effects. They have icons already set up, messages, and you can tweak all of this if you want or add things into it if you want to as well, but for this, it's pretty much automated already for you. Okay, see all the events there, the items kind of itemized there. So the second page was auto execute, as you see down here. Okay, so it happens automatically after page one. And then page three is investigate. So this will pretty much tell you that um, if you come back to the treasure chest, if the treasure chest is empty, you already have what was in there. Okay, cool. So let's show you the event one more time here. And I'll show you the event log one more chance here for you guys as well um, at the door. So test play. Again, the treasure chest is already pretty much automated there. Again, by um, going to easy create, treasure chest, uh, item, and then putting your item that you made for the door or whatever. This In this case, is a door we want to go into and then we have a key. There's our key. So make sure you make the database item first, then do the treasure box second, okay? Also, I mentioned it earlier, one more time here, on page two, make sure your page condition is set up here for having the key, that way they can actually go into the door. So this page condition will take place when uh, the character has the key. If they don't have the key, they can't get inside and it will not activate page two here on this event. Okay, awesome. Test play. Starting positions already here to test out things, make it easier for us. All right, so here we go. We'll go to the door here. Hello. No one's answering. So if we go back here, it will give me the same dialogue. It won't give me anything else because we haven't met the page conditions yet. The page condition is to have the key, right? So let's get the key. Here we go. We got the key. Awesome. And you can see in items here. We have a church key. Pretty cool. So we'll go up to the door here. And as soon as you touch, the next uh, page happens. It is activated um, with having the church key using the item. Here goes nothing. The key is rusty. Sound effects and you're into the church guys. Pretty awesome. And of course, you stay with the key here that we have access to the church at all times. Head back out. All right, guys. And that does it for this little tutorial video of showing you treasure chests. Um, also using a key that we find in the treasure chest to go into a locked door. In this case, the church in Nandoy village of my game. It's a little bit of a test scenario for my game. Um, I have some other things already set up, which are kind of surprises for my game. So you may see them in our Let's Create series. So check those videos out as well. And uh, any questions, let me know. Uh, review this video. Look at the event log here as we test play the game. And also kind of slow the video down, pause it if you have to. To kind of copy and write down or take a screenshot of the event uh, items as listed in order. That way you guys have a good idea of what to put into your game. And again, the most one that's created customized the most is the one on the door here um, the treasure box is pretty much already automated and easy to create by making um, the treasure chest and choosing the, the key in the item um, choice so here we'll go back out one second for you again showing you how important this is here when you're making this event on the door making sure page two here has that switch that has page one 
activates page two. And again, the church key is there. That's your item. Without that, the you can't go through the door. So make sure you have the uh, uh, that selected there. You have the church key. Cool. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Make sure you guys blast the like button, comment below. Any questions you have, let me know. And thanks for helping each other out. We will see you back here next time. Bye, everybody. Hello, Nintendo Chit Chatters. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome back to more tutorial videos for RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And today's tutorial, guys, is showing you how to make uh, kind of an evil land turn peaceful or peaceful land turn evil. Uh, having a beautiful land turn into destruction or destruction turn into a beautiful pristine land as well. So if that makes sense to you, follow along guys, watch really closely here. Uh, we're set up here for initial position set up next to our evil castle here. This is an evil castle, has a purple moat. Keep that in mind. Let's test play this game out right now. And then show you guys how it works and what to do to make it happen in your game too. So from the beginning, all right, so we're going to go into our castle here. Again, this is an evil castle in my game. So you start out in the overworld, you'll eventually find this evil castle. you got to walk up to it here. Um, let's go right into it here. We have a bunch of things here to go through. Let's see here. We may have to get some keys and things like that. Oh, I know where we can go. It's been a while since I actually played my castle, guys. Go all the way over here. We're going to skip these encounters. Actually, you know what? I will turn them off for the test play right now. Just because I want to show you guys. Without being bothered too much with this. There we go. Cool. So we're going to head over here. There we go. All right, oh, so we're over here. Okay, cool. So this is the evil castle, right? Then we have this boss guy here. So we have this boss we have to take out. I'm just kind of showing you what we're doing here. All right, so we have to uh, beat up this uh, rabid wolf mole guy. We're going to skip this. So let's say you defeat him, right? Okay. So, you're in the castle, you do everything you have to in the castle here, um, you do all the puzzles, you beat the boss in the castle, and then you go onto this little transporter right here, right? Cool. You won't last long up north. Alright. Whatever, dude, right? <laughs> Skip these monsters. More monsters. I thought I'd turn them off. Didn't I turn them off? Off. Oh, well, that's not a, that's not not an encounter. That's actually a visible monster. This guy wants to chase us down. Looks like. All right, cool. So I wanted to go in the spot here because that snake was in our way. Uh, so anyway, what this does is it transports us out. Cool. Back into the overworld here. Uh, sorry for the repeat of the monsters there. But now here's the thing. Before we go up north, that would continue my game, basically. And in the beginning of my game, uh, there's no bridge right up there in the north. Uh, so it's not possible to actually access, access the north without defeating the boss in the castle. But my point in this episode in the tutorial video, guys, is to show you how to turn something kind of like destruction into something beautiful. So now look, after we defeated the boss, we come back to the castle, and look at this. We're in the overworld again, same overworld, but now the castle here is restored, it's pristine, it's beautiful, it's peaceful. The moat's not purple, the moat is blue. How do you do that? And this is just a small example, too. You can go actually create a whole map um, that changes if you wanted to. I'll show you how. It's pretty simple, actually. So we'll force quit the game here. And let's do this. Okay. So my overworld is called Majestic Overworld. Uh, and in this scenario here, I wanted the fact of you beat a boss in this castle. 
And after you beat him, you get transported up north into the overworld. And if you come back at all, uh, this castle where you beat the boss will return back and be restored to a peaceful castle. So in the first scenario, we have the evil castle in purple moat. Pretty cool. But now how do we get this to be peaceful with a blue moat and a, a peaceful castle? Here's what you have to do. Go to uh, your maps, basically. Cool. And what you would do... I should go all the way out here to the maps. There we go. So here's Majestic Overworld. You would actually copy your overworld map. Hit the A button. Actually, if you hit B, go to copy, and then hit A. And then you can copy that overworld map, making a duplicate. And I have it down here. All the way down here. There we go. And I renamed it to Majestic World 2. Now, here's the thing. This overworld is exactly the same. The only change is being down here. Uh, in this case, the castle is peaceful. So I chose the peaceful castle asset. Uh, I deleted the other one off of here, the evil one. I put the peaceful one in its place and I added the uh, blue water for the moat instead of the purple water. So we changed that. And also in my land up here, I also added, of course, this bridge accessing up to here. And a little bridge over here, I believe, as well, will eventually be connected. Um, but up here, this bridge is not available in the Majestic Overworld, the original one, only in Majestic Overworld 2. So what you could do, uh, like mine, you could make a castle like this. If you want to start off peaceful and then have it turn evil, you could do that. You just basically copy your overworld map and make a duplicate. Then you can do small little changes to make it look uh, either pretty or destroyed. So in this case, again, we had the purple moat, now it's blue, evil castle, now it's peaceful. You could also do it with trees as well um, and mountains. You could change some of these trees out for more ugly trees. Um, you could add, if you have nice mountains, you could add these mountains over here, more like a rocky kind of wasteland. Um, you could change some tiles as well. Uh, you could choose more like um, uh, maybe some lava or something. Uh, more dirt tiles if you wanted to change some of the grassy areas. And having a big change happen to the overworld. Uh, so it's the same layout in your world. You don't want to change or build any more rivers. Although you could do that, I guess, depending on what you want to do in your game. But if you want something that like goes from nice to destruction, you can do all kinds of things. Um, you could even have, uh, for instance, this lava here, you could turn it into water then. Uh, so if they defeat something in your game or go to a certain area and complete a certain mission, you can have then this change uh, from lava maybe to water or something like that in a nice wooded area possibly. Again, with the same kind of um, layout on your map, just changing a few of the features to get an idea that's nice and normal once again. All right, so now we go back to our castle and show you what we do here as well, because it's very important. Once you have the two maps and you're making your small little changes to each map, again, leave one how you want it in the beginning of the game, and the other one will be for the big changes that they'll go to later on. Uh, we've got to go to our castle here. So Majestic inside. There we go. Cool. And this little transport uh, icon down here, little mat I placed, this is actually where the event is at. Click on edit event. Cool. And you'll see this is not connecting maps. This is a one way transport basically from one map to the other map. Uh, if you connect maps, that's a two way street basically. Uh, you don't want to do that for this particular instance of changing something from nice to bad or bad to good, um, destruction to pristine, pristine to destruction. So here we go move location. And we selected. So we're in Majestic World right now. The move location would be, of course, Majestic Overworld 2. We'll click on that. And then you can choose wherever you want for the player to start or to appear. Now, I actually have the move location being up here on this bridge already. Um, if you want them to see the change in the map right away, you could just have them come right outside the, the map here, basically, and start. So you put down the event there, and that would be where they would be appearing after they're done uh, inside of your uh, castle or whatever. And they would come out and show you, and they would see this uh, nice castle now with the moat. 
So that's again, very important. I'll show you where it is here again. So this move location, you go to the little footprint here and click on move location. And this is where you choose where do you want the person or the player to go to. And you go to the duplicate world uh, that you're in right now. The copy and paste pretty much. Majestic Overworld, we're going to Majestic Overworld, Majestic World 2. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense, guys. You could do it with um, a castle like I did there, a village if you want to. Um, the entire overworld can be totally destroyed or brought back to life. And again, you're just going from one world to the other, but it looks the same. So it gives a player um, the sense of that they completed a mission or progressing in the game and something entirely different has changed. Uh, it's still the same world they know, it just looks different right there's either um, some dead trees now or there's lava or there's water where there wasn't water before things like that so we're going to discard that and go out here so again you can choose what you want to do with this with um, in your overworld um, i just want to do this castle and make the castle kind of peaceful once you beat the boss and then transport it up north in my game if you ever come back in my game to this castle after defeating this boss here you'll see it's restored back to a peaceful castle with a blue moat of water which is really awesome <laughs> very cool well hope you guys enjoyed that video a little bit of a tutorial video showing you how to um, take one map copy it and make it change a little bit to create the idea of something being destroyed or brought back to life in the game so i'm eddie ray for nintendo chitchat.com we will see you right back here next time see you guys Hello Nintendo Chit Chatters, I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome back to more tutorial videos, RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And today guys, I'm going to be showing you how to use uh, ropes, ladders, vines, that sort of thing, and allow you to traverse them with the player's character across pits and up walls and things like that. I'll also be showing you how to use bombs to blow up a wall, so stay tuned for that. And this video will actually be in two parts. When I first recorded it, I forgot to show you guys the first part of the video. So that is this first part. It's the easier part. Uh, ropes, ladders, and vines. The second part will be the same thing, but uh, using events to make those happen. So let me know which you guys like best. I like them both, actually. I think they both add an atmosphere to the game and a little bit of unique gameplay as opposed to just having everything the same in your game. So let me show you. And of course, oh, stay tuned for the bombs in the second half of the episode. So here we go. We have this pit here. I just put it randomly in our castle. I know it doesn't really match the tiles on the ground. It's okay. This is just a pit here for testing things out. So we're going to go over to our little uh, assets here. And hit the right trigger and get to uh, these little icons. We're looking for um, ladders, vines, and rope. So let's use a ladder for this. We have the top of the ladder. It's going to extend out there and then we'll bring it all the way down across like this so you do get the effect depends how you place the ladder of the ladder going down into the pit um, or in this case it's laying across the pit which is cool now here's the important thing we're going to start up the event here really quick and create an initial position so we're going to start right here Initial position. Cool. There we go. Nice. And we'll test play this for you guys. All right. So here we go. We have our pits. We're in our castle. We have this cutscene that I made, of course, too. <laughs> Which is still playing. I forgot to actually delete that. That's okay. You can see our cutscene, which is kind of cool. Our little test cutscene. All right, so here we are. Um, at this moment, we can't access the ladder. Uh, it is blocked off. So if you were placing ladders and wondering how to get them to work, again, you probably saw a tutorial video, I think, yesterday, the day before, on collision. Uh, that's what you want to go into to fix this. So it's very easy. So once you place the ladder down in your editor of the map, hit the B button and go to collision you see how the ladder area here is all x'd off you want to actually uncheck those spots so you have access to the ladder and there we go now our player can go across that ladder across the pit which is super cool all right so that's good 
We'll save that. All right. Let's um, actually let's go back into that map really quick before we test play it. And go over to this wall over here. Um, let's say you want to have the player uh, be able to go over this wall into this room. Let's say something's blocked off over to the left, so the only place they can go is here. Or it could be a choice too. I'll go into our assets. And again, you can have a ladder here. Um, we'll put both here to show you. Put all three here, actually. We'll use the uh, kind of a silver ladder here. So we'll build this all the way down. There we go. Cool, there's our ladder. Going all the way across. And we also have our little rope here, too. The top of the rope. We'll extend it all the way down. Actually, to the bottom part. There we go. That's perfect. That should be good. All right. Let's delete this little fire torch. And there's also a vine here, which you can use. Maybe select the vine. There we go. Cool. There we go. That should be good. All right. So we have those. Now, again, uh, the collision for these is probably on. So let's check it out. Okay. So for the rope... Um, there is no collision, so it's actually right away usable. For the vine, it is usable as well right away. Uh, the ladder does have the collision here, so we'll check that off. There we go. We'll save this, and we'll do our test play and see how well this works. Awesome. So this is a really easy way to make the ropes, ladders, and vines, and things of that nature work in the game. You can also use logs. Um, and I'll show you the other thing you can use as well really quickly. After this cutscene plays here again, this is from our test cutscene. I forgot it was here, so no worries. All right, cool. So we'll do a little pit over here again. We can actually go over our pit now. We'll show you. Cool. So we can traverse the pit. <laughs> I actually... Uh, have in my game, this is a copy of my uh, map of my game, so it has me going across and going to a new world, just so you guys know where that cut out. Now let's have the initial position be over here. Let me actually cut out the, um, that cutscene. Cutscene is, I think it's right here. We'll delete this cutscene, because that was just a test. There we go, so we'll do this again. We'll delete this out of here so it doesn't actually make us disappear. <laughs> cool. All right, guys, here we go. Test play. Awesome. This should work perfectly now. No cutscene, no waste of time now. And here we go from the beginning. Again, showing you these ropes. Of course, the ladder. See, that works really well. The collision is now off of the ladder, so we can actually use the ladder for traversing the map. And of course, this ladder here works very well. Now we're in this room. Isn't that cool? You can come back. Um, we can use the uh, the rope here to get up there. Cool. And the vine, too. So what's cool is you can mix and match these. You can have a little puzzle set up where only one of the ladders actually gets you to the room. You get maybe three ladders here, and the other two ladders have the collision still on. It's just an idea for you. Cool. So if you're using the vine as decoration as well, or even the ladder for decoration, and you don't want them to access it, make sure you put the collision on. Double check to make sure it's on. Okay, so there you go. You can go in from one room to the other. Now, I do have the second half of this video. shows you how to do the same thing here, basically. But not with collision. It's actually using events. And I actually use the movement of the, the jump feature, which creates a cool little animation, I think, going up a ladder. I think it's going to be kind of cool for my game. So check it out. Let me know what you guys think. All right, we have that. There's also bombs coming up as well. Let me show you one more thing here while we're at it. And then the second part of the video we'll play for you guys. So edit map. You also have these assets too, so don't forget, um, in the tree here. These are all the assets that came with the game. I'm sure there'll be more um, very soon. So you can do logs and things like that. There's some really good assets here, down on page three. So you have these logs, which you can kind of form across the pit. Maybe this way. There we go. So you can actually make that as well. Uh, traversable. That's a word, I think it is. <laughs> and there it is, the collision's already off, so you can actually cross that way as well. 
or you can also block it off depending what you want to do. So do check out our collision video on how to work all of that. And back here, go to our map really get quick again. And I'll show you one more cool little asset you can use for the stock. Page three again on the tree icon is this board. And the boards go uh, either this way vertically, vertically or horizontally here, which is cool. So you can use those if you want to as well. And kind of build that across. There we go, across it like that. Maybe one more piece there, the top there. So you can cover things up with boards. Um, you can make them um, accessible to different areas, crossing over pits, up walls. Really just use your imagination. So that ends part one, guys. Stay tuned for part two. We'll show you, again, ropes, ladders, vines again, but using events this time. I'll also show you how to use bombs to blow up some walls. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Hello Nintendo Chit Chatters, I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome to more tutorial videos for RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game, and today guys, I'm going to be showing you how to use bombs in a pretty cool way, and also use ropes and ladders, at least in the ways that I found for my game. And I was hesitating to actually show this to you guys because, um, when you play my game eventually, I want you to be surprised and have fun with it. But I'm kind of putting everything out there too, so if you're watching my videos, when you play my game, you may not be as impressed or as excited because, well, you're seeing everything kind of be created in front of your very eyes. So uh, anyway, uh, I thought I'd share with you anyway because I want to I do that with you guys. You guys are awesome to me, so giving back to you guys too. Make sure you guys blast the like button for me, comment below, and subscribe. All right, so this is my lookout tower dungeon here. So lots going on here. A lot of decorations, lots of weird things going on, some puzzles. Uh, here's a pretty cool thing. Let's show you some test playing here, okay? I will show you how to use bombs to uh, break through a wall or an area where the person cannot go through until the bomb is used. Pretty cool. Also be showing you how, how I use ladders and ropes in the game. Excuse me. Right from the beginning, we have our initial position set up here already to make it easier for us. All right, so we don't have a bomb. Okay, no bomb. Over here is this barrier here. Um, you can't get past it. It's these cement kind of blocks. Um, you, there's no, you know, there's no passage through. Nothing like that. No teleportation area at all. Uh, we have to go over there. It appears there's like a ladder behind that um, gross, vicious mushroom back there. So we have to go all the way over here. And we'll skip this guardian ramp battle for now. And we can actually pass through here and we can get a bomb. Which is pretty cool is because uh, these areas here, same areas above, right there, these little fire pits with these like weird blue water. Um, it's not a chemical spill maybe, or something like that, I'm not quite sure. Just a very broken down um, area in this lookout tower. Uh, but I made the collision here so you can actually go through and get to that treasure box. So that's a pretty cool idea. All right, now we have the bomb. I may at some point here put a message here, uh, like a little event that when the person investigates the wall or touches it, dialogue will come up saying, hmm, what could we use to damage this wall? A little hint, there has to be a bomb somewhere, right? But I figure if they get to that treasure chest that they have a pretty good idea of what to do now, right? So we're gonna use the bomb. Bomb, we're gonna use it. So we'll go to here. Now we'll use it. The hero moves away, shaking, explosion, exploding, and boom! There we go. It damaged the floor, as you can tell. It left some effects there of the tiles on the ground, of it, uh, like the blowing up pieces have damaged uh, the floor now. And now we can go and. But we have to fight the enemy, of course, right? I'm gonna skip this. So he's gone. And now we can go up the ladder here. We're gonna hop up the ladder, and there we go. Pretty cool. Uh, it's a one-way ladder, so you can't go back down. I'm sure you can make it so you could go back down, but in this case, once you're up here, uh, you're going on to the rest of the level. That's my idea. Okay, got a clock here. Uh, these gates you can't pass through. There's no other treasure boxes, no other uh, items, I don't think. Nope. All right, so we have the rope here. There's a rope on the wall here. Let's do this. There we go. And we can go to our next area of our dungeon. 
So let's show you how all of this works, how it's set up. And um, well, this is a tutorial video. Um, it's not the Let's Create video, so this is be showing you how all this works, guys. Okay? <laughs> so we're at treasure chest. We showed you treasure chest earlier. Uh, we have database. We have the bombs uh, load up into our database, and we have the item being the bomb in the treasure box. Cool, easy, right? Now we have this event here. There's lots going on here too. We have the event here pretty much copied and pasted six times. Uh, the reason being is this. Let's go in here. Edit event. Okay, so I chose a graphic of this like cement kind of structure. It's part of a, a castle structure in the graphics uh, assets area here. So I chose that and it looked kind of funny just sitting on the ground there. So what I did was I added an event below it as well with the bottom piece with the graphic here of the same kind of assets, just the bottom piece of this kind of uh, cement pillar. So it kind of gives it a fuller look uh, on my map. That's what I wanted, okay? So I did that for all of these events here. They're pretty much copied and pasted, it's the same event for everything here, okay? We'll click on one of them here and show you how everything is set up now, okay? So page one, event content is very important. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, the start is this, use item. You have to use the item, in this case, the bomb, to start the event. All right. Cool, and in this case, we have the bomb selected. Yeah, there we go. So in this case, this is a sample um, bomb already loaded into sample data in your database. So you can just upload it or import it into yours and you'll have it. A large bomb causes medium damage to enemy party. And there's the damage you can do. Cool. So we have the item check marked and chosen. Event content, here we go. All right, so I chose a sound effect, explosion, the screen shakes, uh, the large bomb. I guess I could have the screen shake after the bomb goes off. Uh, we have the animation of the bomb. These are all just choices you have in your menu um, when you add events. All of these choices are within these certain areas, okay? Cool, and then we have a switch here too. This is switch 38, awesome. So pretty simple. And then page two, uh, there's no event content, nothing moves. We have past judgment um, unchecked. Cool. And of course the page condition is the switch. There we go. Now, pretty much what I did is this. I hit the A button and I copied this. And I copied this here and I copied this here. That way we have a wall the character can't go past. And I also uh, copied and pasted the event here, here, and here. It's the same exact event, but the bottom three here just have that different graphic. They have this graphic here to fill in the bottom of our little cement pillars here, okay? It's the same switch. Everything else is set up the same way. There you go. The other important thing I did was this. Uh, page two on the bottom part has nothing. It's a blank graphic. So nothing will show up, but the top part here is where you have the damage of the floor to show up. And how do you do that? Uh, pretty cool idea here. Here we go. Hit the A button, edit on page two. Page two has this graphic chosen here. This is the same floor that is in our dungeon or area right now. Here is the uh, completed, you know, nice pristine mint condition pieces. And here we have pieces with holes in them and things like that. So we have a whole bunch of them here in a line. This graphic is chosen for this one. So that when the bomb explodes, uh, you'll see this kind of damage in the floor, which is a little bit of a cool effect, I think, in the game. And that's chosen for all of them here. Cool, so we have page two, same thing. There you go. Graphic is chosen there. All right. And then same thing over here. The graphic is chosen there, okay? Now, these are all on the same switch. Uh, if you're like copying and pasting enemies uh, into your maps to save time, make sure you do uh, switch the switch numbers out so each one's on a different switch. Uh, that way, if they battle one enemy, um, they won't all disappear. <laughs> but in this case, we want everything here to vanish from the map. So they're all on the same switch. When uh, one of the events goes off, they all 
disappear at the same time. It's the same switch. And there we go. So that's how that works. So we'll do the test play one more time here. All right. Save. Right from the beginning. And we'll get our little... Um, wait for this rat guy here. There we go. Get our bomb. Beautiful. We'll skip this sequence here. Just to show you. All right. Come up here. All right. We'll go to user item. Kind of like initial sounding and then shaking and then a big explosion there. And there you go. We can pass through all this. There's a floor damage. And that's that. Hope you guys learned that. Uh, replay the video so you guys understand. Uh, watch all the event logs happen here. And watch it a few times. I'm sure you'll get it um, for your own use. So there you go, guys. How to use bombs to blow up a certain area. Pretty cool way, right? All right. We have this mushroom guy here. Skip him. We'll actually back out of the game entirely here to show you how this works. Now, I tried making this event here. Uh, I have the jumping part raised up a little bit here. So I tried making the event a movement event, uh, the hero moving. Um, but I had to choose jump to actually get him up there. I'm not quite sure if you guys have any ideas how to make this work exactly. But um, in this case, I went to the movement section. And I went to hero jump. I tried doing hero movement, but it wouldn't work. It wouldn't actually get him up there. Probably because of the collision. And the fact that we're actually going over a wall, I guess. I don't quite know. But in this case, we choose hero jump. As you see, all of these options are here. And we'll actually back out and show you uh, the event here. There we go. Show you how all this is set up. We have you jumping forward, uh, three steps, jump speed, you can change that too. Uh, but all this was tweaked to get him over this area here. So that's the only occurrence there, really. There's no other pages. And this starts when the character touches. Okay, awesome. And we have this set up right here, um, set up on the floor tile. It wouldn't actually get over the jump Unless he did further steps, probably. So I figured they kind of climb a little bit, and then he jumps over and pops over there. Pretty cool. So there's the event there for the jumping over that ladder. And this ladder is just an asset in your map editing, basically. Go to Edit Map here. And when you're editing map, uh, there is a certain page. I forget what page is on. Four ladders. You can find those in your uh, map editor. All right. Go back into there. Oops, I backed out too far. <laughs> That's okay. All right, so we're gonna edit event. There we go. So that is for uh, the ladder, guys. Let's go over here to the rope. The rope was the same thing. In this case, uh, just a different asset from the ladder. It's also a silver ladder. I like the, the kind of the wooden ladder the best for this area. And I have the rope here. Same thing. Uh, this is a bit shorter of an area, it looks like shorter of a wall I think so we have the event down here edit event and again uh, no graphic needed here's the event content again hero jumping there we go three steps jump speeds three confirm we can actually preview it too in this um, scenario right here there we go so you can kind of preview it there there you go cool and that's pretty much that. Those are pretty easy, actually. There's no other dialogue here. I mean, you could add sound effects and um, little dialogue back and forth, like, should we try climbing this rope? Yeah, let's do it. And then here we go. Boom. Then the action happens. Little um, sound effect or something like that, you know. Really up to you guys what you want to do with it. But those are pretty easy. Uh, adding in ladders and ropes and little jump events. And we'll show you the quick little preview here of uh, this event here. Edit. Yeah, you know, go into the event. And we'll do the preview of this. So hit the A button. And there we go. We jump up to here. Pretty cool, right? And again, this is a one-way thing. I'm sure you can make it two ways um, by creating another additional page here or continuing the event maybe or made, making a new event actually and placing the other event up at the top of the ladder or top of the rope to come down. 
Uh, but in this case, uh, it's pretty much a one-way area I want you to go from level to level in this lookout tower. So there you go, guys. Um, again, I was kind of hesitant to show you some of this information just because um, I'm really spending a lot of time kind of creating these kind of cool little puzzles and things like that. And some of them are pretty easy, of course, but um, they're kind of cool, too. I could put that bomb totally somewhere else where you have to come back into the dungeon here or the lookout tower to uh, use the bomb. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you guys support our series of our tutorial videos. There's some more to come. Not quite as often as far as tutorials goes, but we'll be doing our Let's Create series pretty much every day, continuing on until we finish our game. So keep blasting that like button, guys, leaving your tips, comments, suggestions, and help each other out. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello Nintendo Chit Chatters, I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome back to more tutorial videos for RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shoutouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And this series of videos, guys, will be coming out a little bit slowly, but every so often I'll be doing these videos, tutorial videos for you. And this one is called Tips, Tricks, and Ideas, giving you my tips, uh, some tricks, and some ideas for you to help you with your game production. And also, just maybe uh, you can pick up an idea or two and expand it upon and... Uh, include it in your game and make it even greater. So here we go. I covered this in our bombs, uh, ladders, and ropes tutorial, but I wanted to go over the bombs again because it kind of stood out a little bit, I think, in that video. And it could have been hidden in there too because it wasn't until later in the second part I actually covered the bombs. So if you didn't watch the whole video, uh, go back to that bombs, ladders, ropes, and vines tutorial video, and then also check back, of course, with this one too. But this one be on the bombs from the get-go. So here we go. I have my initial position here. And let's just set it up. Uh, we have the treasure chest with the bomb inside. And of course, the wall here. We can't get past until we bomb it, which is pretty awesome. So let's test play this puppy. And I'll show you guys how the event works again, and then give you some ideas, some tricks, and some other things you could do with it, too. All right, so here we go. Where's my cursor there? From the beginning, make sure you guys blast the like button. Love your comments, tips, suggestions, and let me know what you guys are working on as well. I help where I can. All right, so we have a treasure chest here. We've got a large bomb. And again, this is just sample data imported. There are small bombs, large bombs, and also dynamite included in the game. Then I have the event over here. We can go to the wall, go to our items, and use the bomb. Our characters will go away and watch the wall here explode. And there we go. Now we can pass and enter up this way. Of course, there's an enemy there. After we defeat him, we can go up the ladder and continue on our journey in this dungeon area. Pretty awesome. So let's go and see how this thing works. I was kind of thinking of how could I use a bomb in the game besides just using it against enemies, which is kind of, I guess, would be the most common idea. So my idea was this, to create a wall or a blockade. And I chose this graphic just because it kind of blends in and kind of fits more naturally um, within the dungeon, I guess you could say. It looks kind of, um, you know, these little three pillars here kind of blocking the way, almost like they should have been there from the get-go or they were put in place to help prevent access, which I guess you could say they were. Um, so we have events, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. These are all the same event, all on the same switch. And I'll show you and break it down for you again. Again, we covered this in our bombs, ladders, and ropes, and vines tutorial, but also covering again for you guys today in this one too. Okay, so the event content, uh, we just chose our graphic. So I wanted to blow up a wall. So I chose this pillar here, and there it is, cool. And the event content of course we have starting on using the item and that item would be a large bomb you can import this sample data into your database or make a random name for you can make it uh, any kind of name uh, and include a different icon if you wanted to you could use dynamite a grenade whatever you want to do but you can import this large bomb data. it's pretty easy into your database already sampled for you there we got that all right event content here's the cool stuff we have the explosion sound effect, which you can find, of course, right here where the speaker is. We have uh, the screen kind of shaking, which is a cool little effect that can all be found down here in the screen control options. Good. And then we have this here. Um, this is the use of the item. Of course, we have the large bomb selected because you're using a bomb uh, to start this event. And then, of course, it will de decrease the bomb from your repertoire, from your... Uh, quantity there so it takes it away 
then we have the animation the, of the explosion itself and we have the switch in this case we have switch 38 here uh, you can name it if you want to this is our number that we're at number for this particular event is 38 and of course keep it defaulted it's already on switch one confirm cool then we head back so that's the setup of the event and then we have a page two and of course the page conditions is that switch when that page one switches on it goes to this page here um, there's no other activity no event content but it will change the graphic and I chose this kind of ground tile which appears to have like a little hole in it and that could be from the explosion being large enough that it would actually cause it to crack in the ground which is pretty cool I think we could have chose these or any kind of thing we wanted to really um, but I chose this one here and I have it for all three I might change it eventually to maybe a smaller one at one particular area of it but uh, there we go so that's cut and pasted then one two three here four five and six same event same switch that way when the event's done everything goes away and clears away and shows the rubble or the floor with the holes in it but down here of course the other graphic is a bit different and this is just a filler graphic same event same content uh, just a different graphic we have the bottom part of our pillar here so the first part we have uh, this here this graphic and you notice it kind of cuts off there so we actually chose then the bottom part here to kind of fill in the bottom part making it a more a full appearance on the map we have that chosen and again the same event content here everything's the same it's just a different graphic chosen for the bottom three that's cut and pasted there that way it gives us the full look for all three pillars and there you go and of course our bombs in the treasure chest here you can do treasure chest very simple guys easy to create you know all this stuff of course treasure chest check that and then go to your item selection find bomb and there you go so that's how you do that pretty cool so if you want to think outside the box what else could you do with a bomb well you can blow up these pillars right let me show you what else you guys can do i'm gonna head back here to my other maps and if you've been watching my let's create series you probably will have seen some of these ideas there we're gonna go over to um let's see here bring them under awesome all right, and we're going to go up to the top here. And we're going to make initial position right here for you. All right, and we'll test play this for you as well. Showing you guys what we have here. So instead of blowing up like a cement wall that's clearly visible, blocking our path, we're going to blow up an entrance inside of this dirt underground area. So here we are. Well, I got a fixed collision there. You see that actually goes all the way through. <laughs> Good thing I tested it out. So we got a bomb, and now you don't know really necessarily know where to put it, but things will kind of lead you to this way here because you can't go over here. Um, I guess you could bomb there, but it wouldn't do anything. So I have this little spot here. These two spots you can bomb between the two torches. You'll bomb. There we go. Cool, and it blew an entrance into our little dungeon area, allowing us to access and go to the other side, which is really cool. Okay. So we go back. All right, let's actually, um, let's look at the collision here really quick, just to test that out and to edit that really quick while I'm at it. Otherwise, I'll forget. Yeah, add collision. There we go. Perfect. Uh, that's fine. There's no collision there. Just the bottom part we don't want to go through. Perfect. Okay. All right, guys, back to the event I'll show you. It's set up the same way as the one with the cement walls, but just thinking outside the box, instead of having, like I said, a visible wall to blow up, you have a kind of a hidden entrance here. And this entrance for me is to go from one part of the dungeon to the other. It could be a separate room, and you can make a separate map interior for that, and then connect um, the event entrance uh, from here to maybe inside of a house or another underground somewhere or anywhere you want. You could have it be filled with uh, all kinds of treasure boxes or enemies, uh, any kind of things you can think of. So I have the wall here, and these are the events kind of cut and pasted again. We have four of them here. And again, the event's pretty similar to the one with the bomb. But in this case, we have the graphic to match the outer wall of the dungeon. And this is the underground dirt, so we found that in our graphics. Chose uh, that one right there. Good. All right, so using, of course, use item is, in case, the bomb, right? We all know that. The event content, pretty much the same. We have a flash this time. We have a sound effect, animation, and, of course, one more switch. Cool. 
So that is cut and pasted. Uh, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And the bottom layer here, a little bit different graphic. This is to match the bottom layer of the underground wall there. And that was found right here. So that's the top, that's the bottom. Using these graphics for the events to kind of match where we want to place them on our map and our world. Event contents are the same, guys. Taking the bomb away, as you see, the animations, the flash. And also I have these two lower spots. I have one more extra event occurrence here. I have the top part, the first one being um, the hero moves. So that means when you place the bomb, the hero will kind of move away from the wall, which makes sense. You don't want to have it explode where the hero just stands. There's kind of lame, I guess you could say. So he moves away from the wall, and that's on the two lower spots because the two higher spots, they can't reach anyway. So not necessary there. Awesome. So that does it for this cave entrance. Again, you can use this for an entrance to blow up and have it go to an interior of a room. In my case, it goes and connects from this area to the other side of the map over to here. Okay, and there's two entrance ways here then. Okay, so that is pretty cool. Now let's try down here. In this case down here, uh, we have dynamite you have to get. I'm not going to test play it for you. It's the same kind of thing. Just giving you guys some tips and tricks and ideas here. Instead of blowing up a cement wall or blowing up a, a wall to make a cave entrance, we have these big boulders you can blow up, which is pretty cool. And look what I did here. I also added a tree. Okay. Well, we might as well show you this. So I'll show it to you now. Uh, we're going to start our character here. Oops. Let's create the event initial position. I guess this is pretty cool. So again, this is just for tips, tricks, and ideas for you kind of expanding upon the bomb idea. Uh, the more you guys see me do these kind of weird things, maybe, and outside the box a little bit, you'll think of some really cool ideas yourself. Let's test play this. All right, here we go. From the beginning. Cool, so here we are. We have a little ladder here. We can go over to here. Got some dynamite. Awesome. Head back. All right, we're going to skip this little uh, encounter. I know I can turn them off, but skip it. All right, this big pillar. So we can't get past here, so we have to use our dynamite. Now watch what happens. See the two big boulders there? Again, they're set up the same way as the cave entrance that was blocked with the explosion with the bomb, and also the cement wall we showed you in the first part of the, the video. Uh, same way it's up just with the graphics and of course the items and everything um, so look through there for the event content uh, same thing just different graphics we use the item here but i also have the tree set up too so it's kind of cool dynamite's pretty strong now watch this green tree and bam we have a little bit of fire some gravel a boulder left over and the tree totally took part of the damage as well and there we go so a cool little idea for you guys to create some destruction for your world you can have a bunch of trees set up, and uh, you can have maybe um, them use, I don't know, any kind of maybe bomb or even other other weapons, maybe like that flame weapon in the game that would cause damage to trees like that. So that's pretty cool. Giving a little bit more life, I think, to the game. Okay, so that's awesome. Head back out of here. And what else do I want to cover? Oh, yeah. One more little event to cover for you guys it is right here. Now, let me show you this. All right, we're going to put you right here. Initial position. Confirm. So with the bomb idea, we can also do this. Instead of using bombs, in this case, we have a big um, base pile or whatever of dirt. Now here's some spirit do. Ooh. All right. We got some things falling from the sky. We actually have to... Where's that treasure box? I think it's back here. It is back here. Now, I started from uh, the other side of the map here, so that's why there's no cave entrance there. But let me blow it up really quick for you guys. Because normally you wouldn't start where I had the set position, so you get the idea. All right, so we're going to use that. Use the bomb here. Okay, here we go. Right, so we have the shovel in that treasure box that you get in that first area here. Then you're over here, you get spirit doing that. These fall on the ground. Now we have this big pile of dirt here. Now if you watch my Let's Create series, you've seen this already, but I'm showing it to you in this video. A little bit of a tutorial video again for you. 
letting you guys um, see some really cool things to help you expand upon your game and just ideas all by themselves. So we're going to use a small shovel here now, and we'll shovel away the dirt. You can add dialogue. It's the same kind of setup as the bomb um, with the graphics, and instead of using the bomb item, you're using the shovel item. Now we can go through. We've shoveled away the dirt, and now we can go through this area here, which is pretty cool. All right. I'll quickly show you how that's set up to you guys, just so you know. And again, these are just for ideas for you, okay? So we have here the dirt, and we have the graphic here. Again, it's this left part of the dirt, then we have the right side being the right, bottom right, and bottom left. That is our mound of dirt, and everything else is blockaded off, so you can't get around it, so you have to use a shovel. That's why I have the treasure box over here with a shovel inside. And that was a sample item in the game, too, so make use of that. Um, you could also put a boulder here and use that weapon. I think it's a, it's a pickaxe in the game that's sample data. You could use that, too. Uh, make this a big boulder, like down here. And instead of blowing it up with dynamite or bombs, you can have them find a pickaxe um, in a treasure chest or somewhere, or even get it from an NPC. And then you can have them have to use the pickaxe to kind of mine or break down the boulder or rock, which is cool. So same setup here, guys. In the event, um, you can choose your effects, your screen animations if you want. We have some dialogue here too. Then of course, the item here, the variable, it removes the shovel from our inventory. And then the switch is on, goes to page two. And of course, different graphics here. A smaller pile of dirt there. The other section here has, let's see here. I think page two has a little bit smaller pebbles. There we go, yeah. So you get the idea. All right. So that covers all of these bombs, shoveling and things like that. And let me show you um, one more thing, guys, that you can do. So with these kind of custom events, uh, we can go to our Brynham Science area here. And I showed this one time as well in our game. Um, uh, let's create a series, maybe um, one of the episodes, maybe five or six episodes ago. We're going to start the episode right here. Set event. Initial position, right there. Cool, and here we go. Test play this for you guys. Give me some more ideas that you can do with enemies that you can see on the map. So in this case here, you're in this dungeon here, there's bats, you see snakes, there's encounter chips on here. And then you have this just chicken here, which you may have seen in some of the towns that I had earlier. It looks friendly, but watch what happens. Of course, that's the bat. <laughs> here is the chicken. Oh! The chicken turns into an evil monster. You have this little kind of flask on its head showing it's some, some kind of a weird experiment, right? And of course, you have to battle it. Special effects. There we go. It's a cockatrice. Different. So you can make your enemies kind of morph uh, from one thing to another as well. And that's the same setup, guys. Go to the event here. You're just choosing different graphics. So we have our event here. We have three pages, actually. Now here we have start when the character touches. Event content. The graphic is the chicken. Here's the event content for you guys. Uh, we have the chicken sound effect. We have little medicine icon expression above their head. And we have our switch here. Okay, so that happens first. Then it goes to page two. Okay, event content, different graphic now, changing into this kind of enemy. Event content. All right, we have an animation for gas. Um, don't show the animation, so it takes that flask away. Then we have the battle. We have a battle branch here. Okay, and then page three. Uh, when it's done, there's no graphic. And the, another, another switch is here that's on, and then the pass judgment's off. On this page here, so when the enemy's away, um, you can pass through it. Nothing's in the way for you guys then, okay? So just a little idea here for when you guys are creating enemies. You can make them morph from one thing to the other. You can have even a lifeless object become an enemy if you wanted to. So really think outside the box. And that's a little tutorial video, guys, for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, just a little bit of tidbits here for you, showing you some more ways to use bombs. Blowing up walls, making cave entrances, uh, blowing up boulders, shoveling dirt, uh, mining dirt with a pickaxe perhaps as well and then changing enemies from one thing to another. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Hope you enjoyed and got some ideas. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. 
Hello Nintendo Chit Chatters, I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome to more tutorial videos over RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. This is our Tips, Tricks, and Ideas tutorial video. Shouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And today, guys, we are in our pyramid once again, showing you some more ideas you can do. And let me show you this video really quickly. Uh, let's test play the game, actually, I should say. Uh, so this idea came to me when I wanted to have an area kind of blocked off. Um, but not right away. It only happens once you pass it. So here we go. This is pretty cool. So we're starting off in our pyramid right now. And as you walk through here, you know, the arrow's pointing here. So we come down here. And all of a sudden, ooh, an explosion happens, you see? And now there's a wall here. And we, like a big step of the wall here. We can't get back up. We are now blocked in this area. It's a cool little, um, maybe like a little jump scare in a sense, um, creating a little bit of effect um, as you're playing the game in this particular area of my game. Cool little effect you can add to yours, and of course you can create these little um, things to happen all over your maps and in dungeons. So let's break it down for you. So this idea was just kind of block off a certain area as you're passing by it. And let me see what we have. So we have the events here, kind of copy and pasted, similar to our bombs and everything, as you saw before. And we'll open the event up here. All right, so the event content, um, the first graphic though is empty. Nothing happens. Uh, the event content, there is stuff happening though. We have in the event content, we have a sound effect for smashing. Then we have the animation, we have the earth kind of animation, uh, like the dirt kind of falling. That's kind of cool, I guess. Then we have a switch on it too. Okay, and that switch will activate on page two. And of course this starts here when the character touches. All right, so page two is very important. Now we have our graphic, we have the wall showing up here. So it's not there at first, it's totally invisible, which is cool. So it was only triggered once you walk over the event area, the little tile on the game, um, and then it's triggered. Uh, page one happens and page two, then we have the wall appear. So there's our graphic. This matches our inside of our pyramid. We have that there. I suppose I could add a top layer to it too, as we added and filled in um, the wall for our bombs. So I may do that eventually to actually um, fix this, um, because this idea came first before actually blowing up the bombs with the wall with the bombs. Cool. So there's a switch. No event content on page two. And again, starts when character touches. So again, this is a bit reverse from the bombs in the sense that there's no graphic. Page two has the wall then. So nothing happens until the animation sound effects, and then you're walking past it and the wall looks to fall, basically. That's the idea I have for this. And that's copied and pasted across from here to here. Okay, pretty cool. So again, test playing this for you guys. We'll do that really quick. All right, from the beginning. So again, these are just some ideas, some tricks and tips for you, suggestions, ideas. And there we go. Now, if they try to come back here, you can't go back. So it's kind of a cool thing. You could add a few of these in a dungeon area or some kind of cave entrance or something like that, or a house if you wanted to, almost anywhere. And in fact, we have it elsewhere in our game too. I'm sure you've seen that if you've been watching our Let's Create series. We have another one set up in the Brynham Underground area. Cool. And this is just kind of for special effects a little bit more or less. All of these little silhouettes here are the same event, copied and pasted over on the same switch as well. So once it happens, they're all done. We'll put our little encounter here. Actually, I should say, we're gonna put our event here, set up initial position, test play it for you guys, and show you what it's like. All right, down there, cool. All right, so this idea here is your underground and my idea was to kind of create like a little bit of an earthquake or the earth shaking causing these rock formations to kind of fall from maybe the, the ceiling of the cave area down to the ground, creating a path you can have to walk and navigate around. That was my idea. So maybe you guys can maybe expand upon that in your game. Let me know if you do. So here we go. All right. So once you come out here, wherever you walk into one of those silhouettes, we have the uh, shaking, the sound effects, and now these big uh, rock formations fall to the ground. And they're kind of freaky at first, like what happened there? Ooh, got a bunch of them there, all falling and kind of creating a cool little atmospheric effect in our cave area. So just some more ideas for you guys as far as the walls kind of appearing 
and blockading off a section, or just for special effects here, causing a little earthquake as you're underground here too. Adding a little bit more depth, I think, to the gameplay and having some fun with it too. Okay, we'll back out of here. Now I'm gonna show you one more little tip and strategy for you guys on this tutorial video. Let me show you, actually, before we do that, let's go to the edit map really quick. Let me show you, it's the same event um, as the wall, basically, but I will show you how this is set up too. In this case, again, you have uh, nothing for the graphic for the first page. Event content could be special effects, screen movements, sound effects, there's our switch. And then page two, uh, page conditions is the switch. Event content, nothing. Then we have our graphic that would appear there, and there's part of our graphic there. And we have one for the top of that formation, and then one for the bottom to copy and paste it all about our areas here, okay? So that's the setup of the event. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Again, you can add dialogue, other effects, other animations if you want to. It's really upon what you want to do for your game, okay? And all of these are copy and paste. This is the top part, this is the bottom part, top and bottom top and bottom so we have one two three four five kind of areas of rock formations falling down onto the the gravel here on the floor of our underground uh, dungeon cool all right let's head out guys let's go to an area here um we're gonna go into a map let me see here um let's go to nandoy village all right so here we have a big pool of water and if you guys noticed i'm gonna edit map here of course, you can't do collision on the overworld, unfortunately. Um, a tip for the overworld, by, uh, by the way, uh, if you want to make certain areas of the overworld um, not being able to be traversed or not being able to be navigated by uh, the characters playing the game, um, if you have trees that they can walk into on the overworld, but you don't want them to go into those trees, let me show you what you can do really quick. Uh, head back out of this map <clears throat> into my overworld before we get into that, there we go. So again, you can't use collision in the overworld map, but you can get around it. Um, so again, collision here is grayed out. You can't use collision here. But let's say you have, um, for some reason you have an area, you don't want somebody to go, right? I do actually, I have that over here. Um, you can use bigger mountains. So in this case, we have these big mountains and a small mountain blocking off the area. We have that rock formation and the lake around here or the river, I should say, around here, and you can't access anything down in this section down here um, because these mountains are blocking off. You can't navigate through that on the overworld map, okay? And this bridge here, when you're playing my game, isn't there, so keep that in mind, too. Uh, so if you have trees like these here, you can move through those because there's no collision on those, and you can't change the collision, but what you could do is use the bigger trees here in place of the smaller ones because you can't move through the bigger trees. So the smaller mountains you can't move through either, um, and the big mountains you can't move through. So use big mountains, small mountains to block off some areas, um, and in the case of the trees, um, you can use bigger trees in place of the smaller trees to kind of help create a path for your people when they're playing the game. Just some tips for you, okay? Hope that makes sense. Because There's no collision there. So let's go back to our village here. And speaking of traversing water, let me show you guys this too. We had some comments on this too. So some tips, tricks, and ideas for you here. Actually, let's go to the village itself. It's the Nandoy home. All right, here is the village. There we go. Here's the village. So we have a big pool of water here. All right, so we go to a collision, and we can't take collision off of the water. Um, some of these areas where there's a tree you can take off, you see? Um, there's a tree here, you can take the collision off of there. Um, if you have like a lava pit too, some of the areas on the edges of the lava pits or the edges of the water sometimes have some gravel, which you can remove the collision on. But you see the bulk of this water, uh, you can't remove collision. So if you want the effect of uh, the players walking through like a swamp area, or even walking in the water for some reason, you can make it happen. Now watch what we do here. You can go to edit map. I gave this answer in comments before. I'm not sure if I ever showed it to you on a tutorial video. So here's some tips, tips and tricks, guys. Let's go to our decorations. I'm gonna find a weed, okay? 
Find a very small weed. There we go. If you add weeds... Some random, like, lily pads or weeds or whatever, you're now adding a layered asset on top of the water, which means... There is no collision there, because those weeds automatically have, by default, no collision on them. Now, you can check the collision, and you can create a path now, through here, for the person to navigate, you see? So they can navigate up here, and down through here, like this, all the way through. So they can come in here, down through here, up here, like a little maze. Kind of like a secret passage, you see? Now, if we would play that, our character can move right through this little um, area here with no X's, all the way through, up, down, through there, and around back over to the other side of the water. Pretty cool. Now, I know it's kind of weird having all of those little weeds there, um, but what you could do is just, um, you know, kind of scatter them around like I did there, maybe a little bit less of them, and create your uh, collision. You can add collision, like I said, on those weeds, or by default, it's already off. Okay? Cool. And the other thing you can do is this, too. Since that weed is probably one of the smaller ones, too, in the game. Let me uh, fix this. we got to find that water. All right. Uh, let's find It's going to be a wildlife find this water tile. <laughs> uh, which water was that? I'm not even sure. There we go. I think it was this one here. Yep. Okay, so let's uh, take these little weeds off really quick. So you can use different assets basically to layer on top of these water or lava pits that have the collision on by default and are locked on. And you use the, again, use the weeds to basically create no collision so you can walk through. Um, the other thing you can do is this. Use a smaller asset, okay? You have these little shadows here, which you can use, um, like this here. It does show up, though, kind of weird, looks kind of odd, so maybe not use that at all. Um, the best thing to do would be using the vine. The bottom part of the vine is so tiny that it's like a speck. And you can add this little speck around here. Now, it does show up. I mean, you can easily see it, right? But it's not much of an eyesore as the weed. Uh, maybe you can mix and match so it doesn't look as crazy as that. Um, we'll put them all around here, you know, in every, every square or tile. But again, go to a collision here. Now look, there's no collision um, by default on that little part of the vine. This is the bottom part of the vine. But now you still have a little pathway through here all the way across. If I would have put one there, you could have it across then to that side of the um, area, okay? So this is just a way you can traverse the water. Again, you can do it by uh, water or lava. If you have a moat around a castle, you could possibly do that as well uh, by creating this little uh, area for people to walk around or something like that. So just some thoughts for you guys. But this is a way you get around, kind of a workaround. Delete all of these off here because this map here I'm actually using in my game. <laughs> there we go. Yep. Go back on and do that. Cool. Delete this off. So some more tips and ideas for you guys as far as uh, this is concerned. Again, um, you can't remove the collision from these areas of water, unfortunately. So you can get around it by doing this. So hopefully that helped you out and uh, gave you some ideas of what you could do for your maps. So that ends this tutorial, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. Give me a nice like button on this video, and we'll see you back here next time. See you guys. Hello, Nintendo Chit Chatters. I'm Eddie Ray Ford, NintendoChitChat.com. Welcome to RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. Shouts to NIS America for providing a copy of the game. And today's episode, guys, is our Tips, Tricks, and Ideas episode number three for this particular little series here of Tips, Tricks, and Ideas. And today, we are in my game right now. We are in the Brynham Science Dungeon. Uh, it's one of the areas, kind of in the final part of the game. Uh, the final part of my dungeon is actually kind of three or four places connected together in the game. It's pretty cool. 
But in this episode, guys, we're talking about some really cool things and some ideas you can use in your own dungeons to kind of make them kind of unique and different, creating some puzzles and really cool aspects in gameplay too. So let's actually play this. Um, I have some events here as you can see. Uh, keep an eye out on um, the fire here, uh, the staircase, and down here, uh, over here we have some gates too. So keep an eye out for some of these things. I'll show you how they work as well. Uh, if you watched our Let's Create episodes, you'll probably be familiar with the fire here. Um, I'll go over one little thing quickly. This fire here can actually hurt you and give you damage. It can burn you, bringing down the HP of the whole party. So, pretty cool little feature you could add into your own game too, is making the fire actually injure the party. Or a single character, I choose the whole party at once, and I do five hit points. But you can do anything you want. Um, so here we go, guys. Uh, let's create our initial position. And I'll go over everything here um, as far as tips, tricks, and ideas. Cool. Initial position. We're here. Awesome. So since we're starting here, we're very, very weak. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Oops. So we're going to test play. There we go. Make sure you guys blast the like button for me. Comment below. Leave me your tips, suggestions, hints, and what things are you working on in your game. Maybe I can help you out or somebody else in our community. All right. From the beginning. So right away... Uh, there's fire jumping out of the lava pit. That's, I thought, would be a really cool little thing to add in here. You only see it in this dungeon here. Um, like I said, in my other village, Nandoy Village, there's fire that hurts you, but it's just fire that sits there. This is moving fire. And you actually have to get around it because it can injure you. So you have to be really, very, very, very careful here. If you walk into it, it, it walks right into you, basically. The fire moves right into you and you die. In this case, you lost 10 HP, so it's actually a more of a more damaging fire here, okay? Um, then you have a moving staircase. Like, what is this? You think, okay, well, maybe I should go in there, right? Or maybe by accident you walk into the staircase? Wrong way. Come back soon. Ha 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 ha, Dr. Brynham. Hmm. And it takes you all the way out here back to Weston Castle, which is pretty much all the way out west making you walk all the way back east for a good several minutes to get back into the Brim Science area. Uh, but let's go back to our gameplay, guys. Seth throws them off. You can create these moving fire that uh, damages the party or an individual character. A moving staircase here. Now this could be an actual staircase that leads them to an important area in the game. It could go to a certain interior of a house or a dungeon, maybe where there's more enemies, um, Maybe there's treasure as well. So you can pretty much do whatever you want with this. In my case, I wanted them to go totally the wrong way and be sent all the way back. So when they come back in here, then they'll probably figure out, like, what do we have to do now? Well, they know for a fact they don't want to go into that staircase. They want to avoid it at all costs. So let's do this. Let's avoid the staircase here <clears throat> and the fire, too. Right. There's a bat in the way here. Oh, jeez. This is like Frogger. Oh my gosh. There, oh, Amelia's done. Okay. This is like, this is literally like Frogger. Now, I'm going to stay away from this, this um, staircase here. There we go. And now we have the collision uh, set up here for the one gate where the mushrooms are. Uh, there's no collision on the gate, so we can actually walk through that and continue on in the dungeon. That's cool. Let's figure out uh, what else to do here. And we also have moving gates. And again, um, there is moving fire, which you want to avoid that. So it's a bit of kind of platforming in the sense here, I guess you could say. Oh! And I got hit with the fire, so you gotta be very, very careful. The moving gates do no damage, but they are kind of a pain to navigate around, especially with enemies in between here. So it's all about making the gates kind of move um, pretty fast and also having some enemies in between. Plus the lava too, you can't go on in this particular area. No collision, there's collision on the lava here, so you can't go there to making up a specific corridor or pathway in my game and really making you think on your feet. So let's see all of these in action here, back into the events here. Cl click out of the game. There we go. Okay, guys. So the fire itself, 
Um, if you watched our Let's Create episode, you'll see how we made the fire as far as damaging you. It's pretty easy. You guys probably could watch the event log as well as we played the game. But then we have the graphic of being fire. And here's the event content. Very simple. Now we have the sound effect fire. Um, in this case, we choose whole party here, getting uh, damage. And this is found right here, guys. You should know by now. Down here in the status control. So we'll click on that. Then you go to uh, increase or decrease HP. Right? So this is fire. We want to cause damage. Uh, so we do a decrease. Leave it on HP. Then we can change the number here. Also change who in our game we want to have burned. I uh, choose the whole party. So whoever's in your party, they all get damaged. This is the late part in the game, so it's going to cause damage to everybody. Okay? Cool. Alright, so let's see the other things here. So we have the subtitle here. We have the screen changing to black. The subtitle showing up on the black screen. Then reverting back. This is all done in our cutscene tutorial as well, so check that out. Then we have a switch set up here at 59. That's our number there that we have set up. Any switch will do for you, depending on what number you have available. This was 59 in our case. Then page 2. Uh, no graphic. Um, switch is there. Now here's a cool thing. Uh, by the way, guys, movement. So I want this fire to move horizontally here. So I chose horizontal back and forth. Then speed was fast. <clears throat> you could do slow, uh, somewhat slow, normal, somewhat fast, or fast. You'd also have several layers of fire or multiple events of fire, like a whole trail of fire moving around. You could have one moving randomly as well. So you can make really cool mazes with this or areas in your game that are just kind of filled with this moving fire um, at random intervals with this. So think about that, what you want to do with it. We have moving fire. Pretty cool. Causes damage. There it is. This one does nothing. And then we have a moving staircase here. Um, so this is an easy create event. You would push A. We go to easy create. And of course you would choose, uh, in this case, a stairway, right? choose either ones that go up or down or these are kind of like underground staircases which are pretty cool so we chose that we'll look at the event here so this is an easy create event we have the graphic layer event content pretty simple we actually have a little message set up here so the person knows they went the wrong way plus a little bit of a storyline here too with dr brenham here kind of giving the player a message like ha 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 you were fooled we have a sound effect here of warping then we have movement location set up here, guys, to that as well. Uh, this is found here. So move control movement location is there. And this is a one-way movement location. So use this. They go one way and they can't go back. It's only a one-way travel. And in this case, they're going back to the Majestic World Overworld, which was over here. And I chose Weston Castle over here. And they're kind of pretty much going right back here between these, between these trees. Totally out of the way. Because Brenham Science is all the way over here. And up north. Over to here. There it is right there. So it's a pretty far way to travel back. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty cool. Go back. And that's pretty much that, guys. So you could actually make a whole uh, interior um, or a house area or like a dungeon with all of these moving staircases and they could all do nothing and one could be the gateway to where you have to go so you could really kind of fool the person playing the game by using these little techniques and ideas um, so if you want to do nothing you don't choose a movement location don't do anything else in the event here you can put a subtitle down if you wanted to on some of them if you wanted to or sound effects but don't do any movement locations just do one movement location on one of the staircases if you do a whole bunch of them together then of course we have it moving around as well. Again, this is horizontal for the way my dungeon is set up here. Uh, you can do all kinds of different ways here randomly as well. Uh, but we wanted to do horizontal. And speed is normal on this particular one. Okay. Pretty simple. So some ideas with the fire and stairwells. Then pretty much the same scenario over here um, with this fire. Just copy and paste over to here and over to here. And moving horizontal. Now we have moving gates too, and this is just randomly uh, made by choosing the gate asset, the graphic. There we go. No event content. It's just moving back and forth, creating a little bit of a hazard in your way. Uh, there's no damage here with this. 
Um, you could create damage for it if you wanted to, like the fire, but uh, it's just a gate, you know. So I want it to be more of a kind of a cool little uh, effect in the game. Um, you already have the fire to worry about, so. You got the fire here, then the gate's moving back and forth. There's enemies here, so lots to worry about and to navigate through as you go up to my area over here, which is pretty cool. Okay, guys? So I think that does it. Um, yeah, there's other animals in here and really weird things going on in the dungeon here. I don't want to give away too much for when you guys play, but uh, I want to give you some more tips, tricks, and ideas for uh, this game in uh, number three, episode three, uh, tips, tricks, and ideas tutorial for you guys in RPG Maker Fest on the Nintendo 3DS. So there we go. We have moving fire that causes damage. We have a stairway that transports you totally the wrong direction. We have uh, some little gates you can pass through with a collision taken off. And of course, moving gates as well, which is pretty neat. You can add into your game or dungeons too. So there you go, guys. Hopefully this helped you out. I'm Eddie Ray for NintendoChitChat.com. We will see you right back here next time. Bye, everybody.